All praise to the Most High. Shalom, Israel, Most High, Christ bless you all. Brothers and sisters online, happy Sabbath to you all. Okay, take notes. All right, we're going to go over another edition of The Truth Shall Make You Free This Day in the Spirit of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Okay, give me the book of Psalm 78, verse 1. Because one thing we need to understand is that this Bible, the Most High God commanded us to apply this book. Not only that, but He commanded us that we must teach this Bible to our children. Our children must learn this book in and out. Understand that. That goes for you fathers. Your job is to teach your sons and your daughters. Mothers also. You must follow the command of your Lord in the house. You understand? To educate your children. Okay. Now read that. Psalm 78 verse 1. Read. Chapter of Psalms. Chapter 78 verse 1. Read. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. You hear what God is saying? He says, incline your ears to the words of his mouth. Your ears... You understand? Incline your ears to the words of his mouth. The words of the mouth of the Lord is this Bible. The laws of God. Give me that in Deuteronomy 29, 29. The words of this book is God's commandments. Understand that? So we must incline our ears to the laws of God. Because as a people, we have not done that. Which is why we are at the bottom. We are in captivity. Understand that? Read it. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 29, verse 29. Read. Right. The, secret, the secret things belong unto the Lord our God. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. Go ahead. But those things which are revealed. But those things which are revealed. Read. Right. Belong unto us and unto our children forever. Read. Right. And unto what? And unto our children forever. And unto our children forever. Because the Lord reveals his secrets unto who? Unto his servants, the prophets. You understand? And we must reveal those things unto our children. Read. That we may do all the words of this law. That we may what? That we may do all the words of this law. That we may do all the words of this law. The words of this law is God's commandments. That's what he's talking about. So go back to Psalm 78 verse 1. Pay close attention. Okay, come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 78 verse 1. Read. Give ear, O my people. To my Lord. When he says, give ear, all my people. All my, he's not talking to all people on earth. He's talking to his people. Okay, give me Matthew 2 verse 6. You know what, give me that in Second Chronicles 6 and 6. Second Chronicles 6 and 6. I think that's what I want. Let's get there. Okay. Second Chronicles 6 and verse 6. Read that. Second book of Chronicles, chapter 6 verse 6. Read. But I have chosen Jerusalem. That my name might be there. Yeah, that's it right there. But I've chosen Jerusalem that my name might be there. Come on. And I've chosen David to be over my people Israel. To be what? To be over my people Israel. To be over my people Israel. So God's people is the Israelites, the 12 tribes of Israel. So go back. Psalm 78 verse 1. Now we know who's the subject. The subject is about is God's people who must what? Incline their ear to the words of the Lord's mouth, which is this Bible. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 1. Read. Give ear, O my people, to my law. He says, give ear, O Israel, to my law. Go ahead. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Read. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. The Lord will open his mouth in parables, in dark sayings, in allegories. You understand? Read. Which have heard and known. Mm. Which we have heard and known. And our fathers have told him. And our what? And our fathers have told him. Our fathers. So fathers, your job is to teach your children God's commandments. That's what the Bible is saying. Your job is to educate your sons and your daughters. Read. We will not hide them from their children. You must not hide the laws of God from your children. Go ahead. Show it to the, to the generation to come. The praises of the Lord. Because the praises of the Lord are going to be shown in our children when we educate them. When we educate our children the laws of God, we teach them God's commandments. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Guess what? The praises of the Lord will be seen upon them. Read. And his strength and his wonderful works that he has done. Among Israel, in Israel. Read. For he established the testimony in Jacob. The most high God established a testimony in Jacob. Not in all nations. The testimonies of the Lord are not in all nations. Understand that. Read. And appointed a law in Israel. He appointed God's, he appointed laws in Israel. So we were given commandments. We were not given politics, religion. We're not given democracy. We're not given none of them. We were given the commandments of the Most High God. Read. 
which he commanded our father. He commanded our what? Which he commanded our father. What you need to understand is that the fathers, as the, because we fathers, we've been commanded to teach our children. We've been commanded to teach the nation. That's the job. You men, you need to understand that thing. You're not here to sit you know, and look pretty. Mm -mm. You're here to learn so you can grow in this truth. When you find yourself stagnant, you, you find yourself you stagnant. There's no growth. You understand? You find yourself for simple questions. You cannot answer them. Something wrong. You're not applying yourself. You're not studying. Something is occupying your life. And it's not the laws of God. Understand that thing. There must be, you must grow. You understand? You're not supposed to come in this truth. You stay the same. You find yourself, you are the same way you were last, last year. You're still the same grimy Negro. No, something wrong. You have to grow. First Peter chapter 2 verse 1. No, is it 2 Peter 2 and 2? Start of verse 1. 2 Peter 2 verse 1. I just want to paint the picture there. You need to understand, you have to grow in this truth. Both men and women. Sisters, you must grow. Brothers, you must grow. Okay, read that. 2 book of Peter, chapter 2 verse 1. But there were false prophets. Okay, that's not it. 1 Peter 2 verse 1. Is that what I want? Yes, sir. Read it. That book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 1. Yeah, that's it right there. Come on. Wherefore, laying aside all malice. He says, put aside all malice, evil. Go ahead. And all guile. And all guile. Bitterness. Read. And hypocrisy. And hypocrisy. Go ahead. And envies. And envies. Read. And all evil speaking. And all evil speaking. That goes into gossip. You understand? Go ahead. As newborn babe. As a newborn babe when you come into this truth. Read. Desire the sincere milk of the word. Desire the sincere milk of the word. That's the laws of God. The commandments. That's the milk. Read. That ye may grow the bad. That ye may what? That ye may grow the bad. So the reason why you find yourself you're not growing is because you're not meditating on the laws of God. You occupy yourself with things that are too heavy for you. You occupy your things with, now I want to know the deep dark sayings. That, no, 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 no. Focus on the milk. You understand? Because that's what we've been pushing actually. The milk. Understand the milk. The sincere milk of the world. Love your brother. You understand? Don't hate your sister in your heart. Why you envy your brother? Why you hate your brother? You understand? Those things. Why do you have hatred towards your neighbor? Because that's what's happening in Israel. Lot of envy. Lot of guile. Lot of bitterness. You understand? That's what's happening in Israel today. You understand? Occupying in, occupying in sin. Not wanting to repent. Being rebellious. Being combative, that's what's happening in Israel today. You understand what I'm saying? So that's why you don't grow. That's why you're a spiritual midget. You're not growing. You understand? Because you're not occupying, meditating yourself in the laws of God. God's commandments, thou shalt not. That's what you must occupy your mind with. Okay? Go back to Psalm 78 verse 5. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 5. Go ahead. For he established a testimony in Jacob. The most High God established a testimony in Jacob. Come on. And appointed a law in Israel. He appointed a law in Israel. Read. Which he commanded our fathers. He commanded our fathers. Read. That they should make them known to their children. That's the job. We, may, we are commanded to make known the laws of God to our children. That's a command. It's not a suggestion. That's how we're going to build our nation back up. By fathers teaching their children God's commandments. Fathers setting their houses in order. From, the, from himself, the wife, and the children. And guess what? The nation of Israel. Because your congregation begins in your house. The congregation begins in your house. You, your wife, and your children. That's the congregation. Understand that? Give me that in First Peter. First Timothy 3 verse 5. Your congregation, the congregation begins in your house. You understand? You must make sure that you are in order, your spiritual house, and guess what? Your physical house must also be in order. You understand? As a mirror image of you, your spirit in Christ. Read. First book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 5. Go ahead. For if a man know not how to rule his own house. If you cannot know, if you don't know how to rule your own house, you rule your own house with the laws of God. Read. How shall he take care of the church of God? You cannot be a leader in Israel. That's what he's saying. If you cannot rule your house, you cannot be a leader in Israel. That's what the Most High God is saying. So you brothers that are married, you brothers that are about to get married, understand 
your how your co the congregation begins in your house. Understand that because your the congregation will be a reflection of you. Understand that your house is a reflection of you. That's how it goes. Understand that thing, and that's not a small responsibility. You understand? It is not a small. It's a huge responsibility. That thing. Read again. Come on. First book of Timothy, chapter three, verse five. Read. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, read. How shall he take care of the church of God? How shall he take care of the church of God? Go back to Psalm seventy-eight, verse five. Because this is what the Lord commanded us. He commanded the men to set their houses in order, and we must do that. We must do just that. Okay, there's no if or but about it. Read it. The book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 5. Go ahead. For he established a testimony in Jacob. The Messiah of God, he established a testimony in Jacob. And appointed a law in Israel. He appointed a law in Israel. That's what the Lord gave unto us. Read. Which he commanded our fathers. Read. That they should make them known to their children. Come on. That the generation to come might know them. Mm. Even the children. Which should be born. Even the children who should be. This is going into the grandkids. Read. Who should arise and declare them to their children. You see that thing? That's, gen, that's that generation and wealth of the most high God's knowledge. Read. That they might set their hope in God. We must set our hope in God. We must put our trust in the Lord. That's what he's saying. We must put our hope in the most high God. Read. And not forget the works of God. You see that thing? Because when we don't put our hope in God, we forget the works of God. He's going to tell you what the works of God is. Read. But keep his commandments. That's the works of God. The commandments of God is the works of God. Read. And might not be as their fathers. Mm. A stubborn and rebellious generation. You see what he's saying? We might not be so that we are not as our forefathers in the wilderness. Because our forefathers in the wilderness, they were rebellious, they were hard-headed and stubborn. And they were put to death as first generation. Read. A generation that set not their heart aright. You see that? Read. And whose spirit was not steadfast with God. That's the problem right there. Our spirit was not steadfast with the Mosai. That's what he's saying. That's why he says we were stubborn and rebellious. We, were, we did not have belief. Our forefathers in the wilderness, they had no faith. Read. The children of Ephraim being armed and carrying both. Okay, that's it on that. So, but the point is, the Mosai God is commanding the fathers. The fathers will set their houses in order with the laws of God. Okay, Psalm 78, read verse 35 now. And this is what we need to remember. That's why we must put our hope in the Lord. When we put our hope in the Lord, the Lord will deliver us. Read it. The book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 35. Go ahead. And they remember that God was their rock. That's what you need. We all need to remember. The most that God is our rock. Because as a people, we have forgotten that. Within the government is your rock. You think Ramaphosa is your rock? No, no, Ramaphosa is not your rock. Ramaphosa is just a puppet who was set up by the West. We all know this. But the Lord, our, the Christ, our Lord and Savior, He is our rock. Okay, go ahead. And the High God, their Redeemer. And our, the, the Most High God, our Redeemer, is going to redeem us from captivity, slavery. Ramaphosa is not going to deliver you from slavery. Julius Malema is not going to deliver you from captivity. You understand? Uh, who's the other one? Herman Mashaba. He will not deliver you from slavery. He will keep you at the bottom because he's also a slave. Understand that. And he trusts upon the system that was set up by his oppressor. We trust in the system that the Lord has set up in the Holy Bible. How to come out of slavery. How to come out of the ghettos. How to, how to survive in these last days with the destruction that's coming upon this earth. Understand that. Read again. The book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 35. Read. And they remember that God was their rock. We remember that God was our rock. This this what you're seeing in the congregation now is the us being remembering, remembering that God is our rock. This is an example of us remembering that. The Lord says the Holy Ghost will bring all things to your remembrance. This is an example of the Holy Ghost bringing all things to our remembrance. Look, give me that in John 14, 26 real quick. It's not in my notes, but let's get it. Okay. We remember that the Lord is our rock. That's why we are here now. Okay. Because the Lord has brought that to our remembrance. Read it. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 26. Come on. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, uh -huh. whom the Father will send in my name, Read. he shall teach you all things. He will what? He shall teach you all things. He will teach us all things. The Comforter is a he. He says he will teach us all things. Go ahead. 
and bring all things to their remembrance. And bring all things to our remembrance. Go ahead. Whatsoever I have said unto you. He's telling you who the, com who the comforter is. Christ, he's the comforter. You understand? Christ, he's the comforter. Understand that? So guess what? The spirit of Christ is why we are able to remember who we are, where we come from, what happened to us, and what must we do to prepare ourselves for the second coming of our Lord and Savior. Go back. Psalm 78 verse 35. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 78 verse 35. Read. And they remember that God was their rock. Because of the Holy Ghost. Read. And the high God their Redeemer. And the high God our Redeemer. Because yes, He is our Redeemer. He's going to deliver us from captivity. Understand that thing. Okay. Give me that in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 1. You understand? That they remember that the God is their rock. Okay. Read that. First book of Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 1. Read. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud. Or that all our fathers were under the cloud. Read. And all passed through the sea. The Red Sea with Moses. Go ahead. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. How did Moses baptize us? He taught us the commandments. Moses didn't dip anybody in water. Moses baptized us with the laws of God. Give me that in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 44. I'm going to show you that Moses baptized us. How did he do it? The way Moses baptized us, that's how Christ baptized us. Okay, read that. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 44. Read. And this is the law. This is the what? And this is the law. This is the law. Go ahead. Which Moses said before the children of Israel. Which Moses said before the children of Israel. So how did Moses baptize us? He taught us God's commandments. Understand that. Go back. First Corinthians chapter 10. First book of Corinthians chapter 10 verse 2. Read. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. That's how Moses baptized us. How did he baptize us? He taught us God's laws. Read. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. Read. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. Read. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. The spiritual rock that followed us. Who was the spiritual rock that followed us? Read. And that rock was Christ. And that rock was Christ. So we remembered that Christ was our rock. That's why we're here. Because we remember that Christ is our rock. You understand? Read that part again. First of Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4. Read. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. We all drank the same spiritual drink. Go ahead. For they drank of that spiritual rock. Read. That followed them. That what? That followed them. Come on. That rock was Christ. That And that rock was Christ. You understand? So now, we're going to get into the topic now. Okay? Now, today's topic is called America's Transgender Agenda. That's today's topic. America's Transgender Agenda. Write that down. America's Transgender Agenda. That's today's topic. Okay? Give me that in Daniel chapter 7 verse 7. Daniel 7 verse 7. So what we, what pay close attention here, okay? Pay close attention. What I'm going to go over, uh, some of it is meat, you understand? Some of it is milk, okay? Understand that, but pay close attention. Take good notes. Read that, Daniel 7 verse 7. So here Daniel is going to what? That Daniel is prophesying about the kingdoms that are going to come to pass. So he's prophesying those kingdoms we're not in existence. He's prophesying about the kingdoms that will come to pass. That's what we're about, we're about to read here. You understand? Now, read Daniel 7 verse 1. We're just going to read down quickly. Go ahead. The book of Daniel, chapter 7 verse 1. Read. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his hand upon his bed. Read. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heavens drove upon the great sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. So Daniel is seeing this vision of these four beasts. You understand? These four beasts represent the four empires that will rise. Read. The first was like a lion. The first empire that will rise was like a lion. Read. And had eagle's wings. Uh -huh. I beheld 
till the wings thereof were plucked. Ray. It was lifted up from the earth mm. and made stand upon the feet as a man. So now this first piece that Daniel is seeing represents Babylon. Babylon of Nebuchadnezzar. That's the first beast. Go ahead. And a man's heart was given to it. Read. And behold, another beast, a second, like to a bear. Like unto a what? Like to a bear. Like to a bear. Read. And it raised up itself on one side. Mm. And it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. And they said unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. So the second beast that Daniel is seeing, he says, was like unto a what? Was like unto a bear. This bear represents the kingdom of Media and Persia. Okay, that's the second kingdom that came after the Babylonians. So the first beast is a lion, which represents Babylon. The second beast is what? The bear, which represents the kingdom of the Media and Persian Empire. Go ahead. After this I beheld, and lo, another, mm. like a leopard. Like a what? Like a leopard. Read. Which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. So the third beast that Daniel is seeing, what is he saying? He says he's like unto a leopard. When you read in the history, Alexander the Greek was referred to as a leopard. So the third king, the third beast here represents the kingdom of the Greeks. When Greece came into power around 333 BC. Go ahead. Which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. Read. The beast had also four heads. And dominion was given to it. Okay, that's the Greek Empire. Go ahead. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast. Now, the, the fourth beast is what I want to deal with. The fourth beast. Go ahead. Dreadful and terrible. This fourth beast, it says, it was dreadful and it was terrible. Go ahead. And strong exceedingly. It was strong exceedingly. Ray. And it had great iron teeth. Mm. It devoured and break in pieces. Read. It stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, mm. and it had ten horns. And it had what? And it had ten horns. So this fourth beast, that is it Daniel here, that what he's explaining here, guess what? He's talking about the fourth beast, but he's also telling you that this fourth beast had ten horns. So he's talking about the fourth beast that came after who? The Greeks. But he's also going into America. The, the, the ten horns goes into the European Union here. You understand? So that's what he's talking about. Europe. Okay? Read again verse 7. The book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 7. Read. And this I saw in the night visions. Go ahead. And behold, a fourth beast. Mm. Dreadful and terrible. That's what we want to focus on. The fourth beast. Go ahead. A, and strong exceeding. Because the beast represents man. Give me that in Ecclesiastes 3.18. Read that for me real quick. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 18. So understand the word beast here. Why is he saying beast? Okay. Read them. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 18. Go ahead. I said in my, in my heart concerning the estate of the sons of men. The estate of the sons of men. The sons of men. The sons of men. Go ahead. That God might manifest them. That they might see that they themselves are beasts. They are what? Are beasts. So the beasts that Daniel is seeing is making reference to men, empires that will rise upon this earth. So go back to Daniel chapter 7 now. Verse 7 again. The book of Daniel chapter 7 verse 7. Read. And this I saw in the night vision. Go ahead. And behold, a fourth beast, mm. dreadful and terrible. This fourth beast is an empire that is rising after the Greeks. Go ahead. And strong exceedingly. And this empire was strong exceedingly. Powerful. Read. And it had great iron teeth. Mm. It devoured and break in pieces. Okay, go ahead. It stamped the residue with the feet of it. When it says great iron teeth goes into its military. Okay, go ahead. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. It says it was different from all the beasts that were before it. The first beast was what? The, the Babylonians. The second was the Persians and the Medes. The third was the Greeks. The fourth, we're going to know what the fourth beast is. Go ahead. And it had ten horns. And it had ten horns. Give me Daniel chapter 2 now. Verse 40. Same book. Daniel 2 verse 40. Okay. Daniel is going to give us some more details here. Read. The book of Daniel chapter 2 verse 40. Read. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. The fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. This fourth, this fourth kingdom is the fourth beast. You understand? 
Because in Daniel 7 verse 7, it says the fourth beast. Here in Daniel 2, it says the fourth kingdom. So it's letting you know, this is the, the, the beast making reference to man. Read. Right? And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. The fourth, this is the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. Go ahead. For as much as iron breaketh in pieces mm. and subdueth all things. The iron goes into what? Military. You understand? Military might. Read. And as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. Read. And whereas thou sowest the feet and toes, mm. part of potter's clay. The feet represents the U.S. of A. The feet. Remember, in, the, in Daniel 7, it was a little vague. Here it's being descriptive. Read that again, verse 41. The book of Daniel, chapter 2, verse 41. Read. And whereas thou sowest the feet and toes. The feet and toes. How many toes do you have on your feet? Ten. So we need Daniel 7, verse 7, it says it had ten horns. The ten horns is the ten toes on the feet. Which represents the EU, the European Union, the ten common markets. That's what he's talking about. Go ahead. Part of potter's clay. Part of potter's clay. Read. And part of iron. Mm. The kingdom shall be divided. The kingdom will be divided. That's why in America you've got Democrats and Republicans. The kingdom shall be divided. Democrats and Republicans. Read. But they shall be in it of the strength of the iron. They shall be in it the strength of the iron. Meaning what? They will have great military might upon this earth. That's why America's military budget is in the trillions. You understand? America's military budget is in the trillions. Why? Because America, the Lord gave this white man the spirit of war. The spirit of war upon him. Read. For as much as thou sowest the iron mixed with miry clay. When it says the iron mixed with miry clay, the miry clay goes into what? The great melting pot. The multitude of nations that are flocking to the Americas. You understand? That's talking about them. The miry clay. A mixture of people. People from different cultures, different origins and different races and all that. In the great, this great melting pot called America. Read. Right? And as the toes of the feet were part of iron. The, he says the toes of the feet were part of iron. The, the toes of the feet is how many toes? Ten toes. Let's talk about the EU. Particularly NATO. Because NATO is the military wing of the EU. So that's what he's talking about. Because the EU supports America. Read. Right? And part of clay. Mm. So the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. The kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. The brokenness of the kingdom is the mixed multitude that is over there. That's why it says partly strong in terms of military and partly broken in terms of what? Democracy, feminism, you understand? Homosexuality, all of that. That's the partly broken because many people are over there. You understand? Everybody leave their, leave their, their, their cultures, their traditions and all that and follow America's culture and all that. That's what Rome was doing. That's what America is doing because America is an extension of ancient Rome. And I'm going to show you that in the, using the Bible and also supporting history books. Okay? Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Okay. So now go back. Go back to Daniel 2. No, no. Go back to Daniel 7 verse 7. Read that again. The book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 7. Read. After this I saw in the night vision, mm. and behold, a fourth beast. The fourth beast. The fourth beast is the fourth kingdom in Daniel 2, verse 40. Read. Dreadful and terrible. It was dreadful and it was terrible. Go ahead. And strong exceeding. Mm. And it had great iron teeth. The great iron teeth goes into its military. Go ahead. It devoured and break in pieces. It devoured the kingdoms that way that he conquered. Read. And stamp the residue with the feet of it. You understand? Because America is the greatest kingdom on earth right now. Read. Right? And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. Read. Right. And it had ten horns. The ten horns, which goes back to what? The feet that have ten toes upon them. Jump down now to verse 20. Okay. Daniel chapter no, Daniel chapter 7. Read verse 8. Daniel 7, verse 8. Read. I consider the horns, uh -huh. and behold. They came up among them another little horn. So when he says he considered the horns, these horns here, yeah, Daniel is, this is a heavy thing. I'm not going to go deep into it, but I'll touch on it. He says, read that again, verse 8. 
the book of Daniel chapter 7 verse 8 mm -hmm. I considered the horns the horns, pay attention, he says the horns plural, he didn't say horn he says the horns plural, go ahead and behold, there came up among them another little horn so out of these horns came up another little horn, Daniel is explaining the same thing but he's being more descriptive you understand he says came out of these horns came up another little horn go ahead before whom there were three of the first horns mm. plucked up by the roots. You see that thing? So you have three horns, and out of these three horns came, came what? Came another little horn. Is that it on that? No, sir. Go ahead. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of men. He says, in this, this horn had the eyes like the eyes of men, meaning this horn had what? Wisdom. This horn had wisdom. That's why it says had what? Come on. And, and behold, in this horn, and in this horn, go ahead. Were eyes like the eyes of men. Were eyes like the eyes of men, meaning wisdom, wisdom to do what? To do great things upon this earth, technological advancements. You understand? Going to the moon, space travel. You understand? Medical breakthroughs and whatnot. Yes. Go ahead. And a mouth speaking great things. And mouth speaking blasphemies. That's the same thing that we read about in Revelation, right? Go ahead. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Now jump down to verse 23 now. Watch this. The book of Daniel chapter 7 verse 23. Read. That he said, the first beast shall be the, the fourth kingdom upon earth. Read again. The book of Daniel chapter 7 verse 23. Read. That he said, the first beast. The fourth beast, go ahead. Shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth. Now he's telling you. You see Daniel is making it plain. He says, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth. Read. Which shall be diverse from all kingdoms. We shall be diverse from all kingdoms before it. Read. And shall devour the whole earth. Shall devour the what? And shall devour the whole earth. Because Rome did not rule the whole earth back then. So it's telling you, it's not talking about Rome. You understand? Per se. It's talking about the extension of. Read. And shall tread it down and break in pieces. He shall tread it down, meaning the kingdoms, and tread them in pieces. Go ahead. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are the, ten kings. You see that thing? the ten horns out of this kingdom are the ten kings, which have not which have not had their kingdom as yet. That's what we read in Revelation, right? I'm jumping ahead. Go ahead. That shall arise, and another shall arise after them, mm. and he shall be diverse from the first. He shall be what? And he shall be diverse from the first. Go ahead. And he, he shall be he shall be diverse from the first. Let's talk about the Greeks. Go ahead. And he shall subdue three kings. He shall what? And he shall subdue three kings. The three kings, write this down. The three kings. He's talking about what? The Spanish American War. The Spanish American War. He's talking about Spain, France, and Britain. Because America for it to, for America to come into power, it had to fight three kings to come to get its independence. The Spanish American War the French-American War, and the War of Independence. Write this down. That's the three kings. The Spanish-American War, the French-American War, and the War of Independence with Britain in 1776. You understand? When America was formed. Because America comes out of Great Britain. Understand that? Read that again. Verse 24. Come on. Daniel chapter 7 verse 24. Read. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings. Read. That shall arise. And another shall arise after them. And he shall be diverse from the first. Read. And he shall subdue three kings. Mm. Then he shall say, we shall what? And he shall subdue three kings. He shall subdue three kings. Okay. Now give me second Ezra chapter 11 verse 39. Second Ezra chapter 11 verse 39. Because Ezra's, what captivity was Ezra's? What captivity was Ezra? So, John, stand up and answer the question. What captivity was Persia? Was, was Ezra? Now I'm giving the answer. What's the captivity? Oh, please. Sit down. Okay, read that again. Second Ezra 11, verse 39. Second book of Ezra, chapter 11, verse 39. Go ahead. I not doubt it that remainest of the four beasts. I know, I don't read that right. Come on. You are missing, missing me up. You are missing me. So, John, not in the right spirit. You're supposed to set the right example here. Okay. Read that again. Second Ezra 11 verse 39. Second book of Ezra, chapter 11 verse 39. Read. Add not thou it 
that remaineth of the four of the four beasts. And thou not eat that remaineth of the fourth beast. Go ahead. Whom I made to reign in my world. Because this fourth beast, the Lord says he made this fourth beast to reign, to rule in, in this world. You understand? This fourth beast, the only reason why this fourth beast is ruling right now is because the most High God made it so. Read. That the end of their time. That the end of their rulership, go ahead. Might come through them. It, was, it will come through them. Meaning the end of the world, the end of their rulership will come through them. When they get destroyed, the end of their rulership will be over and Jacob's kingdom will come to pass. Second Exodus chapter 6 verse 7 through 9. That the end of their time will come through them. Second book of Ezra chapter 6 verse 7. Go ahead. Then answered I and said. Actually, hold that. Ezra. What tribe was he from? So John. Okay, raise your hand if you have the answer and answer the question. Stand up and raise your hand. Stand up, answer the question. Shalom, sir. Shalom, sorry, Sam. Oh, please, sir. Oh, please. Yes, sir. He was from the tribe of Levi, sir. Oh, please, sir, Mosai. See right there? He was from the tribe of Levi. Okay? He was from the tribe of Levi. Now read that. Second Exodus, chapter 11, verse 39. Second book of Ezra, chapter 11, verse 39. Read. Add not thou it that remainest of the four beasts. Are you not the one that remaineth of the fourth beast? Go ahead. Whom I made to reign in my world. Whom I made to reign in my world. That the end of their times might come through them. That the end of their times might come through them. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Now give me that in second Ezra, chapter 6, verse 7 through 9. So we understand. What is, what is Ezra talking about here? Remember. Ezra is repeating what we just read in the book of Daniel. Ezra is repeating what we read in the book of Daniel. Ezra was in the Persian Empire. Was during the time of Persia. Daniel was during the time of Babylon. You understand? For those of you who don't know, that tonight's topic is called America's Transgender Agenda. America's Transgender Agenda. Read that. The book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 7. Go ahead. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast. Read. Dreadful and terrible. Come on. And strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. Okay, read again. Read again. Read again. The book of Daniel chapter 7 verse 7. Go ahead. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast. A fourth beast. So Daniel is seeing in a vision a fourth beast. Daniel is seeing a vision of four empires that will rise upon this earth. Starting with the Babylonians, the Persians and the Medes, the Greeks and the Romans. The Romans is the fourth beast that we're reading about here. Go ahead. Dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly. It was strong exceedingly. Go ahead. It had great iron teeth. Mm. It devoured and break in pieces. It stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. So this fourth beast had ten horns. Go ahead. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn. So he says, he says there's three horns, there's horns, and out of these horns came a little horn. Go ahead. Before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And, and behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of men and a mouth speaking great things. So now, this little horn comes out of the three horns, okay? Now, hold that. Give me that in Daniel. Go back to Daniel chapter 2 now. Daniel chapter 2, read verse 40. Daniel is going to give us the same account. Daniel 2, Daniel 7, they're explaining the same thing with more details, okay? Go ahead. The book of Daniel, chapter 2, verse 40. Read. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. The fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. So the fourth beast represents the fourth kingdom that Daniel is seeing in his vision. Go ahead. For as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things. So now this kingdom, this fourth kingdom, it says what? It had great iron teeth, meaning what? Great military. That's what he's making reference to. Go ahead. And as iron that breaketh all these, Shall it break in pieces and bruise? Read. 
And whereas thou sowest the feet and toes. The feet and toes, go ahead. Part of potter's clay. Though the feet and toes, though the feet is still making reference to this fourth beast, which is this fourth kingdom. Okay? Then it says what? Read that again, verse 41. Come on. The book of Daniel, chapter 2, verse 41. Read. And whereas thou sowest the feet and toes. The feet and toes. So it says the feet, and then you've got the toes. The feet represents the fourth kingdom, which is the fourth beast. The toes represents the ten kings that we read about in Daniel 7, verse 7. Go ahead. Part of porous clay and part of iron. The kingdom shall be divided. This fourth kingdom shall be divided. Go ahead. But they shall be in it of the strength of iron. In of those, iron. So this fourth kingdom will have the strength of iron, which goes into what? Military. Go ahead. For as much as thou sowest the iron mixed with miry clay. The miry clay goes into the great multitude that will be flocking to this fourth kingdom. You understand that Daniel is seeing in his vision. You understand? Give me that in Abakuk. Okay. Abakuk chapter 2. Abakuk chapter 2. Start at verse 3. The book of Abakuk chapter 2 verse 3. Read. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. The vision is yet for an appointed time. The Lord is saying. Go ahead. But at the end it shall speak. Go ahead. And not lie. Read. Though it tarry, wait for it. It says, though the vision tarry, wait for it. Go ahead. Because it will surely come, it will not tell. Go ahead. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. He says his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. He's talking about the man that will rule over the fourth, this fourth kingdom. Read. But the just shall live by his faith. We the just, we live by the faith that we have in our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Go ahead. Yea, also... Because he transgresses by wine. Because this man that will rule over this fourth kingdom, he transgresses by wine. Meaning what? He sins through lies. That's what the wine is making reference to. Micah 2 verse 11. Okay, let's understand what the wine is. Read that. Micah 2 verse 11. Start verse 10. Micah 2 verse 10. The book of Micah, chapter 2, verse 10. Read. Arise ye and depart. Mm -hmm. Arise ye and depart. Who is he talking to? He's talking to Israel. Read. For this is not your rest. Because this is not our rest. We are in captivity. The Lord did not bring us in these lands for us to prosper. He did not bring us into this land for us to what? To mingle with the other nations and learn their customs and learn their works. He sent us into these lands for punishment, for us to see the error of our ways and repent and return back unto him. Read. Because it is polluted. It is polluted. The land that we're in is polluted with what? Philosophies, which pollutes us and defile us. Go ahead. It shall destroy you, even with a sore destruction. You see that thing? This land that we're in is going to destroy us as we keep mingling with their customs and their ways. Read. If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie. Because in those lands, we are going to be walking, Mike has prophesied, we are going to be walking in the spirit of falsehood and lies. Read. Say, I will prophesy unto thee of wine. Of what? Of wine. The wine goes into the falsehood. Go ahead. And of strong drink. You see that thing? The strong lies, the strong delusions that we're going to learn in the lands of our captivity. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. Ye shall even be the prophet of his people. He shall even be the prophet of his people because our people are following the customs and traditions that are being taught in these lands. That's why the Lord says we must repent and return back unto him. So this man that will rule the fourth kingdom, he is the one that will be pushing lies and vanity throughout the earth. That's what he's saying. Go back to Habakkuk now, chapter 2. Verse 3 again. No, no, verse 4. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 4. Read. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. Read. But the just shall live by his faith. We are the just. That's why we're here. Go ahead. Yea, also, because he transgresses by wine. He transgresses by lies. Read. He is a proud man. He is a what? He is a proud man. Meaning they hate God's laws. The man that will rule over the fourth kingdom that Daniel is seeing, he will hate God's laws, he will hate God's people, and he will hate God. Go ahead. Neither keep it at home. He does not keep it home. He's in everybody's land. You understand? Because they go and conquer and destroy lands and nations. Read. Who enlarges his desire as hell. He enlarges his desire as hell. Meaning his desire, he is enlarged by leaving the people in a hellish estate. Read. And he 
is as dead. It is dead. It, it kills the people when he comes and conquer. Go ahead. And it cannot be satisfied. He cannot be satisfied. His greed is the Lord is saying. Come on. But gather unto him all nations. He does what? And but gather unto him all nations. That's the miry clay. He gather unto him all nations. That's the miry clay in Daniel. Read again. And gather up and but gather up unto him all nations. What verse you in? The book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 5. Read. Yea, also, because he transgresses by one. Because he transgresses through lies. Read. He is a proud man. They hate God, they hate the Bible. Come on. Neither keep as a hope. They are in everybody's land. They've got military bases all around the world. Read. Who enlarges his desire as hell. They enlarge their desire as hell. Go ahead. And is as death. And is as death. Read. And cannot be satisfied. They are greedy. Come on. But gather unto him all nations. But they heap unto him all nations. The nations that they live in a energy state, the nations that they conquer, colonize, and destroy, steal their resources. He says they do what? But gather unto him. Come on. But gather unto him all nations. But he gathers unto him all nations. That's the miry clay. Go ahead. And heapeth unto him all people. And heapeth unto himself all people that he has robbed, destroyed, colonized, and enslaved. So go back now to Daniel chapter 2. Now we have a better understanding of what Daniel is saying. Okay? Daniel chapter 2. Read verse 41 again. The book of Daniel chapter 2 verse 41. Read. And whereas thou sowest the feet and toes. The feet and toes. The feet represents the what? The fourth kingdom, which is this fourth empire. The toes represent what? The toes represent the, the kingdom that will support this fourth kingdom in these last days. Go ahead. Part of porous clay uh -huh. and part of iron. Part of porous clay and part of iron. The porous clay is the is the one. Gather unto him all people, heapeth unto him all nations. Go ahead. The kingdom shall be divided. The kingdom will be divided, read. But they shall be in it of the strength of the iron. The strength of the iron goes into what? War. Military power. Come on. For as much as thou sowest, the, the iron mixed with miry clay. The iron will be mixed with miry clay. The miry clay goes into what? What we just read in the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk prophesied about the miry clay. The miry clay is the mixed multitude. You understand? That, that today they call it the melting pot. Read. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron. The toes, the what? And as the toes of the feet. The toes of the feet are part of iron. That's NATO, which supports this fourth kingdom, which ruleth over the kings of the earth and is in the fourth part of the earth. Read. And part of clay. And part of clay. Come on. So the kingdom shall be partly strong. The kingdom will be partly strong because of what? Military power and might. Read. And partly broken. And partly broken because of the mixed multitude. Understand that? So there's a division. So guess what? They are divided because they've got democracy and republicanism. Not only that, but because of their division, guess what? There's a mixed multitude also which makes them weak. Okay? Read. And whereas thou sowest iron mixed with miry clay. You see, iron mixed with miry clay. The miry clay is the mixed multitude that we read in Abaco. Go ahead. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. He's telling you who the miry clay is. The seed of men. Multitude of nations flocking over there. Go ahead. But they shall not cleave one to another. They shall not cleave one to another because why? Because the Karamet time, the people that are flocking over there, that this fourth kingdom is heaping those people unto them, they're going to remember that the reason why this kingdom is powerful is because of them. The reason why this kingdom is on top of the world is because of the what? The murder, the rape, and the robbery that they've done in their countries where they come from. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. Even as iron is not mixed with clay. Uh -huh. And in the days of this king. Okay, that's it on that. That's it on that. That's it on that. Go back to Daniel now. Chapter 7, verse 8 now. Daniel 7, verse 8. The book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 8. Read. I considered the horns, and behold, they came up among them another little horn. There are not, this little horn is the fourth kingdom. Read. Before whom? There were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. These three of the first horns that are plucked up by the root because of this little horn, the three horns is making reference to what? Spain, France, and Britain. Spain, France, and Britain. Read. And behold, in this horn, 
Were eyes like the eyes of men. The eyes of men meaning what? This one will gain wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of science. Go ahead. And a mouth speaking great things. The mouth that is using is the media. This horn will have a great power in terms of the media, military, you understand, and technological advancements in these last days. So Daniel's prophesying about Rome, but he's also prophesying about the United States of America, Babylon the Great. Okay, go ahead. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Read verse 23 now, come on. The book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 23. Read. That he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth. You see that thing? The fourth beast is the fourth kingdom upon earth. Is let, Daniel is also letting you know, this fourth kingdom will rule the whole earth. Read. We shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth. They shall what? And shall devour the whole earth. He's letting you know right there. They will rule the whole planet earth. Go ahead. And not only that, but they will have powerful influence on the planet earth. Read. And shall tread it down and break it in pieces. They're going to destroy nations through what? Military. Go ahead. And the ten horns. The ten horns, which are the ten toes, read, which are part of the what? The iron. Go ahead. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings the that ten, shall arise. That shall what? That shall arise. To support this little horn. Go ahead. And another shall arise after them. And ye shall be diverse from the first. Read. And ye shall subdue three kings. He shall what? And ye sub, sub, he shall subdue three kings. He shall subdue three kings. The three kings that this little horn will subdue is Spain, France, and Britain. The Spanish-American War, the French-American War, and the War of Independence, which is when America was formed in 1776. Okay? So Daniel, he's talking about Rome, but he's also talking about America and the EU in these last days. So Daniel was heavy. The stuff that he was bringing out. And this during the time of Babylon. Watch this now. Second Ezra 11 verse 39. I'm going to show you that Ezra, our forefather, during the time of Persia, he saw the same thing and he was given more details. Because notice that the symbol of this fourth beast or kingdom was not given to Daniel. So keep that in mind. Read that. Second book of Ezra, chapter 11 verse 39. Go ahead. And not thou it. That remainest of the four beasts. And not thou it that remaineth of the four beasts of the four beasts. Go ahead. Whom I made to reign in my world. You see, the Lord says he made this four be the fourth beast to reign in his world. Go ahead. That the end of their time. That the end of their time of rulership upon this earth. Read. Might come through them. He's gonna come through them being overthrown and destroyed and wiped out. Go ahead. And the fourth came. And overcame all the beasts that were passed. You see that thing? The fourth came and overcame all the beasts that were passed, meaning all the empires that were passed. It surpassed the Greeks because the Romans absorbed the Greeks, which is called the Greco Roman Empire. Go ahead. And had power over the world with great fearfulness. You see that thing? They had power over the world with great fearfulness, meaning they ruled the world with fear. You understand? Go ahead. And over the whole compass of the earth. And over the whole compass of the earth. Read. With much wicked oppression. You see that thing? With what? With much wicked oppression. With much wicked oppression. So they are pushing all men of wickedness upon this earth. So during the time of Rome, they was pushing it, but it was not over the whole compass of the earth. But the extension of that fourth beast, they rule over the whole compass of the earth with much wicked oppression. Read. And so long time dwelt he upon the earth with deceit. With what? With deceit. With deceit. You understand? They're ruling the whole earth with deceit. Now jump down. Give me that in Second Ezra, chapter 6, verse 7. Because what Ezra said, he said it in the chapters before it. Second Ezra, chapter 6. When he was asking the angel many questions about what's going to happen in the last days. When will our kingdom come to pass? Read. Second book of Ezra, chapter 6, verse 7. Read. Then answered I and said, what shall be the parting asunder of the times? What shall be the parting asunder of the times? What will be the end of the world? You understand? When will the end of the world come? And who will it come through? Go ahead. Or when shall be the end of the first? Where will, the, will be the end of the first empire, meaning the last gentle empire to rule this earth, which we just read about in Daniel 2, Daniel 7. Okay, go ahead. And the beginning of it that followeth. With the beginning of the kingdom that will follow after when this one is destroyed. Read. And he said unto me, Come on. From Abraham unto Isaac. From Abraham unto Isaac. Come on. When Jacob and Esau were born. When Jacob and Esau were born. Read. 
When Jacob and Esau were born of him, Ring. Jacob's hand held fast the heel of Esau. Jacob was holding the, the heel of his brother, Esau. Go ahead. For Esau is the end of the world. Because the reason why Jacob was holding the heel of his brother when they were born is because of what? For Esau is the end of the world. Is because Esau is the end of the world. Esau is the end of the ruling gentle empires upon the whole planet Earth. Read. Really? And Jacob, and Jacob is the father of the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. Is the beginning of it that follows. Jacob is the beginning of the empire that follows when the Lord returns and rules this earth with the roar of iron. Okay. So go back. Second Ezra chapter 11. Second Ezra chapter 11. Now we're going to get the symbol of this fourth beast. Second Ezra chapter 12 actually verse 10. Okay. I'm going to be rushing now. Second book of Ezra chapter 12 verse 10. Read. And he said unto me. This is the interpretation of the vision. This is the interpretation of the vision. Go ahead. The eagle whom thou sawest. The eagle whom thou sawest, Ray, in your vision, Ezra. Go ahead. Come up from the sea. That coming out of the sea, meaning out of the nations, Ray. Is the kingdom which was seen in the vision of thy brother Daniel. You see that thing? It says, is the kingdom which was seen in the vision of your brother Daniel. The kingdom that we just read in Daniel 7. Ray. But it was not expected. Unto him. It was not expounded unto Daniel. Daniel wasn't given the symbol of the fourth beast or the fourth empire or the fourth kingdom. Read. Therefore, now I declare it unto thee. Now the Lord is giving Ezra the, the, the symbol of the fourth empire and the, 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 the leaders or the rulers of the, the, the empire that will arise thereafter. You understand? It, it, the, when you read on, it goes into the 12 feathers, which goes into the 12 Caesars of the Roman Empire. Okay, go ahead. Behold, the days will come that, that there shall arise up, that shall rise up a kingdom upon earth. Read. And it shall be feared above all the kingdoms that were before it. You see that thing? is that This kingdom will be feared above all the kingdom before it. You understand? So now we have the symbol of this fourth beast, the eagle. So, this fourth kingdom has got the symbol of the eagle. You understand? When you read in the history, Rome had the symbol of the eagle. Now, give me the book now. Okay? Give me that book. Give me the book. Okay? Holy Land, page 124. So, that book that you see on the screen right there, that book, we're going to go into the book now. Okay? Come on. Page 124. I'm going to show you the eagle. The eagle is the symbol of... I want, I want them to see the eagle first. Okay. Scroll down. Yep. That's it right there. That's what you see right there. That's the symbol of the eagle. That's the eagle right there. Look at it. Now read the highlighted part. Read that. Come on. The imperial eagle. The what? The imperial eagle. The imperial eagle of imperial Rome. Read. The symbol of Roman power. The what? The symbol of Roman power. So he's telling you who is the fourth beast. Who is the fourth kingdom that Daniel saw. That was not expounded unto him. The symbol of that fourth beast. But it was given to our forefather Ezra. Read that part again. Come on. The imperial eagle. The symbol of Roman power. Read. First carried on legion standards, decorates the face of the first century BC on its cameo. Cameo. So now what you're seeing here is the symbol of Rome, which is the eagle. So now, 2nd Ezra 12, read verse 11 again now. 2nd book of Ezra, chapter 12, verse 11. Re scroll it down, move it down a little bit so the people can see the eagle. Come on. The eagle whom thou sawest come up from the sea is the kingdom which has which was seen in the vision of thy brother Daniel. You see that thing? It says, this kingdom was seen, this beast was seen in the vision of your brother Daniel. The symbol of the eagle. You understand? That's the symbol of Rome. So Daniel was prophesying about Rome. Not only that, but Daniel was prophesying about the last empire that will rule in these last days, in our time. Which also has what? The symbol of the eagle. That empire right there is the United States of America. Now, look up this, the, the American symbol. The symbol of America. Look it up. Okay, I want the people to see. 
that not only was Daniel prophesying about Rome, but Daniel was also prophesying about the United States of America. Watch this. The symbol of America. Okay. Go to images so the people can see it. Okay. So the symbol that this, the what Daniel was prophesying about, letting you know the Bible is a true book. Daniel was prophesying about the empires that was ruling before they even came into power. Okay, that's the symbol of the that's the symbol of America right there. You see that thing? That's the symbol of America. Look at it right there. You okay? Now count the number of stars on top. Now get Daniel seven verse seven. Read Daniel 7 verse 7. We want to count the number of the stars on top of this eagle. I'm going to show you something. Read it. The book of Daniel chapter 7 verse 7. Watch this. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a for beast. A what? It makes reference to the EU, the European Union. Now count the number of the stars on top of the eagle. How many are they? 13. How many are they? How many are they? 14, it's 14, right? You know why they are 14? Those, not those, those stars right there? Because when the EU started, it didn't start with 14 Europe. Because when you read in the history, like the Berlin Conference, for instance, they say 13 European nations. But they didn't start as 13 European nations or 14. They started as 10. They started aiding them. You understand? Because remember, we went over the history. I think it was two or three Sabbaths ago. Is 13. Yes. Yeah, they said 13 European nations. When you read the 1884, the Berlin Conference, you understand, the, the scramble for Africa, they said 13 European nations came together under Otto von Bismarck to take over the continent of Africa and divide it up. Guess what? They didn't start as 13 of them. You understand? Neither did they start as 10. They started as a few and then it increased up to 10. Then they started to add more and more. So the European nations that you see today is not the European nation of how it was started. You understand? But they call it the main 10 because those are the main ones that formed the European Union and they started to add more states upon it. Understand that? You understand? Okay. Now, raise up the... Raise it up. Raise it up. Raise it up. Okay, that's it. Stop right there. Second Ezra chapter 13. Second Ezra chapter 11 now. Second Ezra chapter 11. Read verse 41. We're going to read down real quick. Watch this. Second book of Ezra, chapter 11, verse 41. Read. For the earth has thou not judged with truth. The earth has, you, you have not judged the earth with truth. Go ahead. For thou hast afflicted the meek. You have afflicted the meek. Go ahead. Thou hast had the peaceable. Thou hast had the peaceable. The meek and the peaceable is talking about Judah and Israel. That's us. Read. Thou hast loved liars. They love liars. That's why they've got Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day, uh, Christmas, New Year and all that. They love liars. Okay, go ahead. And destroy the dwellings of them that brought forth fruit. Read. And has cut down the walls of such as did thee no harm. Because we did not we did not do them any harm when they went to the Americas. Guess what? They poisoned our brothers and sisters over there with small pox and all that. Read. Therefore is thy wrongful dealing cut up, up unto thee. Unto the highest. Read. And thy pride unto the mighty. Go ahead. The highest also has looked upon the proud times. Read. They are, behold, they are proud times. Come on. And behold. They are proud times. It's talking about their rulership. You understand? Their technological advancements. The evil that they've done unto us. They are proud times. They are technological advancements. Read. They are science. That's why they are very proud of their science. They love it. They want people to worship them because of their signs. Going to the moon. You understand? Building jets, airplanes, missiles and all that. Read? Scientific breakthroughs. They want themselves to be worshipped because of that. Read? Behold, they are ended and his abominations are fulfilled. Because they are going to be destroyed. Read? And therefore appear no more. Appear no more. Come on. Thou eagle. Thou what? Thou eagle. Thou eagle. So who is the Lord talking about here? He's talking about America. He says, therefore, appear no more, thou eagle. That's the eagle you've seen right there. Go ahead. No, thy horrible wings. Now, thy horrible wings. You see those wings right there of the eagle? It's talking about the amount of people that they've conquered. Because the eagle is a bear of prey. The eagle is talking about their wingspan on how many nations they conquered upon this earth. Read. No, thy wicked feather. No, they are what? 
Not thy wicked feathers. Not thy wicked feathers. Go ahead. Not thy malicious head. Not thy what? Not thy malicious head. Their malicious head goes into those what? The republicanism and democratic. That's the malicious heads. Go ahead. Not thy hateful claws. Not thy what? Not thy hateful claws. You see those claws there on the right? You see those claws? What are they holding? Look at the claws. Look at the one on the left, which is the one on the right when I'm looking at it. Right there. Arrows. You see those arrows right there? War. War. Military. You understand? Go ahead. No, all thy Thy, thy vain body. Thou thy vain body. I'm not going into this today. Go ahead. That all the earth may be refreshed. That all the earth may be what? That all the earth may be refreshed. Because when this man is destroyed, the earth will be refreshed. That's what you read about in Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14 is telling the earth will break forth into singing when they are destroyed. Go ahead. And may return and be delivered from thy violence. Uh -huh. And that she may hope for the judgment and mercy of him that made her. Okay, that's it on there. Now, go back to Daniel now. Okay. Go back to Daniel. No, 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 no. No, no, I don't want that. I don't want that. Give me Second Thessalonians 2 verse 7 now. I'm going to be rushing through this. You can take this off the screen now. We don't need to see this no more. Appear no more, thou eagle. Okay. Second Thessalonians, I mean, Second Thessalonians 2 verse 7. Read that. Second book of Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 7. Read. For the mystery of iniquity. For the what? For the mystery of iniquity. The mystery of iniquity. Iniquity is sin. For the mystery of sin, go ahead. Does already work. Does already work, meaning it's already in rulership. The mystery of iniquity is already does already work, means it's already in rulership during the time of the Apostle Paul. During the time of the Apostle Paul was during the time of Rome. Read. Only he who and only he who now let us will let. The meaning the Lord that allows him to rule in these last days. Go ahead. Until he be taken out of the way. Until he's taken out of his rulership when Jacob comes into power. Read. And then shall that wicked be revealed. And then shall that wicked be revealed. So the wicked is the what? Is the mystery of iniquity. So when it says the mystery of iniquity is making reference to the wicked in the next verse. Read that verse again. Second book of Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 8. Read. And then shall that wicked be revealed. The wicked is the mystery of iniquity. You understand? Jump up to verse 3. Verse 3. Mm -hmm. Let no man deceive you by any means. Let no man deceive you by any means. Go ahead. For that day shall not come. This man that will deceive you is the man of deception, the man of sin, the mystery of iniquity. Go ahead. Except they come and falling away first. Meaning what? Except Israel goes into captivity, we fall, and then we, we're going to rise in these last days, as you're seeing us rising up now. Go ahead. And that man of sin be revealed. The man of sin, guess what, is the deceptive man in verse what? In verse 3. Go ahead. The son of perdition. The son of hell. The son of destruction. Come on. Who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God. Because this man of sin is exalting himself above all that is called God. Go ahead. He opposes and exalts himself. So he opposes the things that are written in the book and he exalts himself against the things that are written in the book. You see that? So the Bible says God is a black man. Christ is a black man. The Israelites are black people. He says no. God is white. The angels are white. Christ is white. And guess what? God's people are white. That's what they push. Opposition is the Antichrist. Go ahead. Or that is worship. And that is worship because he's worshipped in the churches today. Read. So that he is God. That he is God. Now he is worshipped as a God now upon this earth. That's why when you go to church, guess what? What do you find in the Christian church? You find white images in the Christian church where black people worship and bow down to. They complain about the white man during the week when they are at work. And then they worship him on they worship this same white man they complain about on they what? On Sunday. They worship him on Sunday. They complain about him during the week. That's what's going on here. Go ahead. So that he is God. So that he is God. Seated in the temple of God. He sits in the temple's ring. Showing himself that he is God. He shows himself that he is God. Now jump down to verse 9. Verse 9. Read. Even, even him mm. whose coming is after the waking of Satan. You see that thing? Meaning this man whose coming is after the waking of Satan. 
That's why it says they are proud times. The working of Satan meaning what? This man worships the devil. He worships Satan. Read. With all power. With all what? With all power. Military power. And you understand? Go ahead. And signs. And what? And signs. The power in their military and in their signs. They are proud times. That's why it says this one was given eyes. The eyes of men in Daniel 7. He says he was given the eyes of men. Read. And lying wonders. And what? And lying wonders. And lying wonders when they dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima in 1945 during World War II. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, give me the book of Revelation chapter 14, verse 8. Okay. Revelation 14, verse 8. I'm still dealing with the fourth kingdom. We've now discovered the fourth kingdom is Rome. You understand? Which goes into America today. So America and Rome is the same empire. The same race, the same people, the same empire. Okay? Rome is just continuing its rulership now in these last days when they came back in 1453 during the Renaissance era. Read. The book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 8. Come on. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen. Babylon is fallen. Come on. Is fallen. That great city. That what? That great city. That great city is because Babylon is the greatest city on earth today. Babylon the Great. The United States of America. Go ahead. Because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. You see that thing? So all nations are in bed with America. That's why it says, He paid unto him all people and all nations. Okay. Revelation 17 verse 1. The book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 1. But this, but Babylon has not fallen yet. Babylon the Great has not fallen yet. You understand? Because John here is not talking about Babylon of Nebuchadnezzar. He is talking about mystery Babylon the Great. Go ahead. The book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 1. Read. And they came, and they came one of the seven angels, which had the seven fires, mm. and talked with me. Saying unto me, Come on, come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great hall. I will show unto thee the judgment of the what? The judgment of the great hall. The great hall. The great hall. The great hall. Jump down to verse 5 now. Watch this. Verse 5. Go ahead. And upon her forehead was the name written. I Meaning upon this great hall was the name written upon the forehead of this great hall. Read. Mystery. What? Mystery. Mystery. Come on. Babylon the Great. Mystery. Babylon the Great. Go ahead. The mother of harlots. The mother of prostitutes upon this earth. Come on. And abominations of the earth. And abominations of the earth. Because America is not having sex with all the nations. It's a metaphor to say America is in bed with all these nations. He's dealing with these nations like a, like a harlot dealing with men after men after men. That's, how, well, that's why it says the mother of harlots and abomination of the earth. It says mystery Babylon the Great. He's telling you it's a mystery. Because ancient Babylon is not a mystery. Ancient Babylon is Iraq today. So that's not a mystery. And in Iraq, they don't allow homosexuality. They don't allow same-sex relations. They don't allow none of that stuff. So it's not talking about Iraq. Okay? Now watch this. Um, give me the book now. The book. Okay? Give me the book. Um, Bible World, page 148. Bible World, page 148. I'm going to show you Babylon the Great is called, it says, Mystery Babylon the Great. I'm going to show you something with that. Okay? Okay, that's the book you see on the screen. Reader's Digest, the story of the Bible World. Okay? We're going to go to page 148. Okay? Read Revelation 17, verse 5 again. I'm going to show you something about uh, Babylon mystery, this mystery Babylon the Great. What is this mystery Babylon the Great? Go to page 148, read Revelation 17 verse 5. The book of Revelation chapter 17 verse 5. Read. And upon her forehead was a name written. Upon her forehead this great hall was a name written. Go ahead. Mystery. What? Mystery. Mystery. Come on. Babylon the Great. Stop. Now blow up the book. Blow it, blow it up big so we can see it. I want the highlighted part in green on the right at the bottom. Okay. Yep. Scroll down, scroll. That's it right there. Stop right there. Now, I want you to read that. 
This is the Apostle Peter. You understand? During the time of Rome. Okay, read that. Peter now seems to have visited Corinth in distant Greece. So the Apostle Peter was traveling. You understand? Going to different places where Israel was scattered. Go ahead. And may have traveled wildly in other lands. Read. Accompanied by his wife. So he was accompanied by his wife. This is letting you know. The wife of the Apostle Peter was in the full spirit. Meaning what? The Apostle Peter was a revolutionary man. The Apostle Peter's wife was also a revolutionary woman. She understood the mission. That's why she wasn't complaining. But why are you going to so many places? She wasn't doing that. Read. If he was not actually at Babylon. If he says, if, if he was not actually at Babylon, you understand? Because this Babylon here is talking about what? Iraq. He says, if he was not actually at Babylon, he was not in actual Babylon. That's what he's saying. That's what the reader is saying. If the apostle Peter was not in actual Babylon, meaning ancient Babylon. That's what I'm saying. Read. Then he was at the mystic Babylon. He was at the what? He was at the mystic Babylon. So if the apostle Peter was not at actual Babylon, meaning ancient Babylon, he was at the mystic Babylon. Go ahead. Which is Rome. Which is what? Which is Rome. Which is what? Which is Rome. Which is Rome. So Rome, guess what Rome was called? How our four, what our forefathers knew what Rome was? Mystery Babylon. Rome was called Mystery Babylon the Great. That's what Rome was called. Rome was called Mystery Babylon the Great. Guess what? Today, who's Mystery Babylon the Great? America. So he's telling you Rome and America is one and the same. That's what the scholars are telling you here. The scholars are telling you that Rome and America is one and the same. You, understand? you know what the proof of that is what? Revelation chapter 17 real quick. I'm going to show you something here. Revelation chapter 17. Read verse 11. The book of Revelation chapter 17 verse 11. Go ahead. And the beast that was and is not. The beast that was in your vision John. That is not in rulership yet. Go ahead. Remember, this is during the time of Rome. This is during the time of Rome that the apostle that the apostle John is speaking to Christ. Okay, go ahead. Even he is the eighth. Even he is the eighth. Go ahead. And is of the seven. And is of the seven. Read. And goeth into perdition. And goes into destruction. The son of perdition. Read. And the ten horns which thou sowest. And the ten horns which you see. The ten horns that were sitting on the, the feet, which is the ten toes, which we read in Daniel. Read. Are ten kings. Are uh, ten kings, come on. Which have received no kingdom as yet. Read. But receive power as kings. The, but they what? But receive power as kings. There is power as king, come on. One hour with the beast. One hour with the fourth beast that will rule in the last days. Because remember, right now, the fourth beast is still ruling. That's what you need to understand. The fourth beast is still ruling right now. Read. These have one mind. These have one mind. So, guess what? The fourth beast have one mind with the ten toes. They all work together. Read. And shall give power and strength unto the beast. They shall give power and strength unto the beast. So, the ten horns will give power and strength to the beast. Particularly, NATO will give strength and power to the United States of America, which is mystic Rome, mystic Babylon. Read. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. Because when Christ returns, they're going to want to fight with our Lord and Savior when he cracked the skies with millions of angels. You understand? So, right here I'm showing you the same thing that the same account we're reading here is the same thing, same, the same thing we read in Daniel. So I hope you're paying attention and taking notes. You understand? So now, read, the, read, read that again on the book. Peter, one, Peter now seems what? Peter now seems to have visited Corinth in distant Greece. Go ahead. And may have traveled widely in other lands. Mm. Accompanied by his wife. If he was not actually at Babylon. If he was not actually at Babylon, meaning ancient Babylon. If he wasn't there, where was he at? Then he was at the mystic Babylon. Which is wrong. Then he was at the mystic Babylon, which is Rome. So the scholars, they know this. The scholars know that Rome was mystic Babylon. 
Meaning what? Mystery Babylon, the great. The scholars know that the same eagle that was ruling during that time is the same eagle that's ruling today. They just happen to call themselves what? The United States of America. But that's mystic Babylon, which is Rome. We are still ruled, being ruled over by the fourth kingdom. Understand that. Okay. Now, give me now um, Second Exodus chapter 12, verse 29. Watch this. Because this mystic Babylon, this mystery Babylon the Great, their mother of harlots and the abomination of the earth, they are pushing much evil upon this earth. I'm going to show you the amount of evil that this kingdom is pushing. America, mystic Babylon. Read. Second book of Ezra, chapter 12, verse 29. Watch this. And whereas thou sowest two feathers under the wind passing over. The, the two feathers is the last two Caesars of Rome that ruled. That's the two feathers. The last two. Go ahead. Passing over the head that is on the right side. Read. It signifies that these are they. These are what? It signifies that these are they. Go ahead. Whom the highest has kept unto their end. It, it signifies that these are they whom the highest has kept unto their end. You understand? Because it's got the EU, you've got America. Mm. Go ahead. This is the small kingdom. This is the what? This is the small kingdom. And this is the small kingdom. Go ahead. And full of trouble. They are full of what? And full of trouble. When he says this is a small kingdom and full of trouble, why does he say a small kingdom? Because America is a small kingdom indeed. You understand? Meaning on when it was started. 1776, it's a small kingdom. You understand? And look now, they rule over the whole earth. 1776 until now, but they rule the whole planet right now. That's why it says it's a small kingdom and it's full of trouble. Because they are ruling the whole compass of the earth with much wicked oppression. Read. As thou sawest. Mm. In your vision. Come on. And the lion whom thou sawest. The, right, the lion whom thou sawest. The lion represents Christ. Go ahead. Whom thou sawest rising up out of the wood. Mm. And roaring and speaking to the eagle. The, the lion comes out of the wood. And is roaring speaking to the what? The eagle. So who is this lion that is roaring? The, who's the voice of the lion? The prophets. That's us. We are the voice of the lion because Christ is not down here. We're down here. So we're the voice of the lion. We're speaking to the eagle. Meaning what? We're prophesying against the eagle. We're prophesying that the eagle is going to fall. America is going to fall. Babylon the Great has fallen. Okay, read. And rebuking her for her unrighteousness. And we are rebuking them for their unrighteousness. All the evil they are doing upon this earth. Read. With all the words which thou hast heard. With all the words which thou hast heard. The words is the word of God. Come on. This is the anointed which the highest has kept for them. You see, the anointed is talking about what? The prophets. The anointed first and foremost talk about the lion which is Christ. And we also, we are the anointed. Okay, read. Which the highest has kept for them and for their wickedness unto the end. Because the Lord is going to use Christ. The most High God is going to send his son Christ to destroy this wicked kingdom. Mystic Babylon, which is Rome. America. Go ahead. He shall reprove them and shall upbraid them with their cruelty. Because the Lord is going to destroy them with nuclear fire. Go ahead. For he shall set them before him alive in judgment. Read. And shall rebuke them and correct them. He shall rebuke and correct America. Mystic Babylon. Mystic Babylon which is Rome. America. It's all the same. We're still being, we're still being ruled over by the fourth kingdom on this earth. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Go ahead. For the rest of my people shall, shall he deliver with mercy. You see that thing? We are, we, are the, we are the rest, the remnant that will be left after the destruction. It says, shall be what? But the rest of my people shall be delivered with mercy. So during the destruction, not after, but during the destruction, we are going to be taken up with the chariots. You understand? He says, shall we be delivered with mercy? Because the Lord will show mercy unto Jacob and will yet choose Israel. Read. Those that have been preserved upon my borders. You see that thing? We've been preserved upon what? He says the borders because we are scattered all over the earth as slaves. Read. And ye shall make them joyful until the coming of the day of judgment. You see that thing? We're going to be joyous. 
We're going to have joy. Or our king is back and he's black. Okay, is that it on that? No, sir. Go ahead. Where oh, I have spoken unto thee from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Beginning of your vision. Read. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Okay, all praise to the most high. All praise. You can take that off the screen now. Okay. Now, give me, give me the book of Revelation now. Give me Deuteronomy 28 verse 68. Because I touched on this last week when we're going over the depths of Satan class. Okay. Deuteronomy 28 verse 68. Deuteronomy 28 verse 68. Because remember, America is mystic Babylon or Babylon or mystery Babylon the Great, which is wrong. The fourth kingdom that was seen in the vision of Daniel, the fourth kingdom that was seen in the vision of Ezra with the eagle. More details was given to Ezra. Go ahead. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. Read. Right? And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. The Lord will bring us into Egypt again. Egypt is synonymous with slavery. Go ahead. With ships. With what? With ships. Cargo slave ships. Come on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, mm -hmm. thou shalt see it no more again. We're not going to see our homeland again. The Lord says he will deliver us into slavery by the way of cargo slave ships. And guess what? Instead of goods being on the ships, the goods will be us, which will, we will be the cargo. So the cargo on the ships was us. Read. And then ye shall be sold unto your enemies. You shall be what? Ye shall be sold unto your enemies. We are going to be sold unto our enemies. Go ahead. For bondmen. Slave men. And bond women. And slave women. Go ahead. And no man shall buy. And nobody's going to deliver us out of these conditions except for the Most High God. He's the one that's going to do it. You understand? Our forefathers rose up. They tried. They couldn't do it. Why? Because it was not their job to do. It was the job of the Lord through the prophets in these last days that he will raise. You are looking at them right now. Okay. Now watch this. Give me now um, Revelation chapter 11 verse 8. Because what you need to understand is that, yes, we were delivered into captivity. We are in the lands of our captivities right now. We are in South Africa. We are in the diaspora as an example, right? Okay, now read that, Revelation 11, verse 8. The book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 8. Go ahead, because yes. remember, what we read, what Moses prophesied, because Moses is prophesying in Deuteronomy 28. I know some of you missed it. Go back, read again, Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. Listen good, come on. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. The Lord will bring you into Egypt again. We just came out of Egypt. We walked. So obviously, he's not talking about ancient Egypt. Okay, go ahead. He's talking about what? Spiritual Egypt. This Egypt here is not ancient Egypt. Because we just, we are in the wilderness during this time, ne? in Deuteronomy 28. So we just came out of Egypt being delivered from Pharaoh. Go ahead. With ships. With ships. So this captivity, this Egypt that we're going to go to, we're going to be delivered by ships. Because the, the ancient Egypt, we walked when we came into Egypt. Here he's telling us, you are going to go into spiritual Egypt by ships. Read. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. The way Moses said it was going to happen, that's exactly how it took place. Go ahead. Thou shalt see it no more again. We're not going to see our homeland ever again. Go ahead. And then. Once we get off the slave ships, what's going to happen? Ye shall be sold. We are going to be sold. Go ahead. Unto your enemies. Unto our enemies. For bond men, slave men, our forefathers, read, and bond women, our foremothers, go and, ahead, and no man shall buy. So Moses is prophesying about spiritual Egypt here. This is not ancient Egypt, it's spiritual Egypt. Go ahead. Now go back to Revelation now, 11 verse 8. The Come on. The book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 8. Read. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. Their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city. Okay, let's talk about Judah and Israel. The 12 tribes of Israel. It says, we shall lie in the streets of the great city. What is this great city called? Go back to Revelation 14, verse 8. Because I know some of you forgot. I told you, take good notes. Okay, come on. The book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 8. Read. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen. Babylon is fallen. Come on. Is fallen. Mm. That great city. That what? That great city. So what is the name of the great city called? Babylon the Great. Go back. Revelation, chapter 11, verse 8. One more again. 
The book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 8. Read. And there the bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. You see that the, in the street of the great city, which is called what? Which is spiritual. Which no, 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 stop. What is the name of the great city? What is the name of the great city? Babylon the Great. Babylon the Great. All praises. Read again, verse 8. The book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 8. Go ahead. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. The great city is Babylon the Great. Mystic Babylon, which is Rome. America. Read. Which spiritually. Which what? Which spiritually. Which spiritually, which metaphorically means is what? Is called Sodom. Is called what? Is called Sodom. Is called Sodom. So America is called spiritual Sodom. America is spiritual Sodom. Go ahead. Meaning what? They are pushing. Meaning homosexuality is rampant in that land. Read. And eat. And what? And eat. So America is called spiritual Sodom and spiritual Egypt because what? We are slaves under America now. Read. Where also our Lord was crucified. Because our Lord was crucified where? Jerusalem, right? Yes, but Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. Because the people of Jerusalem, where are they? Babylon the Great in captivity. In actual Babylon and all the lands that Babylon is ruling over. You need to be able to explain this. You understand? Okay, so now, watch this. So, why is it called Sodom? Because what America does is that it, exp it studies the empires that came before it. Because in order for America to destroy those empires that came before it, what did America have to do? To study them. Remember, America and Rome is used interchangeably. The kingdom, the empires that came before Rome, what did Rome do to them? It destroyed them is stamped upon them. The kingdoms that came before America, what did America do to them? Is the three kings we read about. Spain, France, and what? Britain. You understand? So now, so much so that now, Britain, which is part of, which is the EU, supports them. How crazy is that? Because the Mosa is making them do it. Because if it was up to them, they wouldn't do it. No. The Mosa is making them support America until the time when they will not support America anymore. So the Lord is making them do it. We just read in Daniel, it's prophesied. The Lord is going to make them do it and they are doing it. They think they are doing it out of their own accord because they decided to be peaceful. No, the Lord is making them do it and they are doing it until they will not anymore. You understand that? Yes, sir. Okay, now watch this. Give me the book of Genesis. I'm going to show you something. Why is it called Sodom? Why is America called spiritual Sodom? Because America, they studied all the they study all the ancient empires. They learned their mistakes and they learned their strength. They said we're not going to repeat that. We're not going to repeat that. But they also take what the sins that made the, the that control the people that they ruled over. They had, to, they had to find a way to control the masses. So they also study ancient empires on how they control the masses. You understand? Through idolatry. That's how it's done. Idolatry. Worshipping of idols. The breaking of the first commandment. Okay? Genesis chapter 19. No, no Genesis 18 verse 20. The book of Genesis chapter 18 verse 20. Go ahead. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great. There's the what? Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great. The cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great. Sodom and Gomorrah Pella is two of the five cities. Sodom and Gomorrah was the capital. It's two of the five cities when you read Genesis. You understand? Chapter 1 is it 14. Okay. Genesis 10, I think. Now, I'm not going to read it, but uh, yeah. Yeah, it's in Genesis 10. Okay, come on. And 18 verse 20. The book of Genesis, chapter 18, verse 20. Read. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great. The cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great. Their cry is great. Go ahead. And because their sin is very grievous. The, you see that? You know what? You see what the cry is? The cry is the sin. Read again, verse 20, because I know some of you missed it. 
Chapter, go, Genesis chapter 18 verse 20. Go ahead. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great. Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great. This is the Lord speaking to our forefather Abraham here. Read. And because their sin is very grievous. Their sin is very grievous. So the cry is the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah. You understand? Go ahead. And the men turn their faces from thence. For what you said. I will, the book of Genesis chapter 18 verse 21. Read. I will go down now and see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it. Read. Which is come unto me. And if not, I will know. So now the Lord says, I'm going to judge Sodom and Gomorrah. You understand? The Lord says he's going to judge them. Go ahead. And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. They went towards Sodom, right? But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. So our, our forefather Abraham was still, we stood before the Lord to what? To pray for them. To pray for the, our people that were in those, in those cities, Sodom and Gomorrah, that the Lord may spare them. That's why when you read it, our forefather Abraham is negotiating. What is he doing? He's pleading for them. That the Lord may spare them. If there's righteous in there, if, there's, there's, if the righteous are in there, that they may be spared from the judgment that's coming. You understand? Jump down to verse 20. Yeah, keep reading. Keep reading. And Abra Abraham drew near and said, uh -huh. Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? You see what he's asking? Are you going to destroy the righteous with the wicked in Sodom and Gomorrah? Go ahead. Per adventure. There be 50 righteous within the city. He says, if there's 50 righteous men and women in the city, go ahead. Will thou also destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that is are that, in? You see what he's saying? He says, are you going to destroy the place because of the 50 righteous that are in there? And he says, are you not going to spare the place because of the 50 righteous? Right? That be, that be far from thee to do after this manner. Go ahead. To slay the righteous with the wicked. He says, don't slay the righteous with the wicked. Go ahead. That the righteous should be as the wicked. The righteous that the righteous should be as the wicked. Go ahead. That be far from thee, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? You see that thing. So he's asking, shall not the judge of the air, all the earth do right according to this? Read. And the Lord said, if I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, mm -hmm. then will I spare all the place for their sake. You see that he says, I'm gonna spare all the city for their sake if I find. Read. And Abraham answered and said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. What verse you in? Verse 27. Says, Go ahead. The book of Genesis chapter 18 verse 27. Read. And Abraham answered and said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Read. Which am but dust and ashes. He says, I'm but dust and ashes. Meaning what? I'm created out of the ground like Adam was. Read. Per adventure. They shall let five of the fifty righteous. Meaning what? Forty-five now. Go ahead. Will thou destroy all the city for lack of five? You see that? He says, are you going to destroy all the city for lack of five? That's what he's saying. Jump down to verse 32. The book of Genesis chapter 18 verse 32. Go ahead. And he said, or oh, let not the Lord be angry. I will speak yet but this once. Read. Per adventure, ten shall be found there. If there's ten left in the city, are you going to destroy all the city? Go ahead. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. He says, I'm not going to destroy it for ten's sake. Go ahead. And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communion with Abraham. Pray. And Abraham returned unto his place. So now, what, what we just saw, Abraham, what is he doing? Give me second verse 7 verse 36. This is what our forefather Abraham was doing. Our forefather Abraham was a righteous man. He was pleading with the Lord for the people. That is the same thing that we're doing. When we teach the laws of God, teach God's commandments, we're doing the same thing that our forefather Abraham was doing with the Lord. Pleading for the people. Pacifying the wrath of the Lord over the people. That spare thy people, O Lord. Don't destroy them. You understand? Read. Second book of Ezra, chapter 7, verse 36. Go ahead. Then said I, Abraham prayed first for the Sodom. You see that? That's what we just read. Abraham did what? Abraham prayed first for the Sodomites. He says, Abraham prayed first for the Sodomites. Go ahead. And Moses for the father that sinned in the wilderness. You see that? And Moses prayed for us in the wilderness. So the same thing that our forefather Abraham did is the same thing that Moses did. Guess what? It's the same thing that we are doing today. Before the Lord. Because remember, we are in spiritual Sodom. How was Sodom destroyed? With fire and brimstone. How is Sodom? How is mystic Sodom going to be destroyed 
How is spiritual Sodom going to be destroyed? With fire and brimstone. It's the same thing. The same thing that our forefather Abraham was doing back then, we're doing the same thing today. You understand? Sparing the people from being destroyed through by fire and brimstone. Understand that? Okay, give me the book now. Um, Genesis chapter 19 verse 1. The book of Genesis chapter 19 verse 1. Read. And they came to angels to Sodom and Eden. Go ahead. And Lord sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lord seeing them rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. So you've got angels now at Sodom and Gomorrah. They are going to fulfill the Lord's, the, they, they're going to fulfill the joy of the Lord. Yeah, that's what they're doing. The angels went, they, they went to Sodom and Gomorrah to fulfill the joy of the Lord, to bring judgment, death and destruction. Go ahead. And he said, behold now, uh -huh. Lord, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, Read. and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early, and go on your ways. Read. And they said, nay. What verse you in? Verse 2, sir. Go ahead. And they said, nay, but we will abide in the street all night. He says, we're going to be in the street all night. We don't want to come into the house. Okay, go ahead. And he pressed upon them greatly. He pressed upon them. And he's like, listen, come into the house. You don't know what the hell going on in this place. This place is evil and demonic. That's the same thing today. Go ahead. And they turned in unto him and entered into his house. And he made them a feast. And did bake unleavened bread, mm. and they did eat. Go ahead, verse four now. Come on. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom. You see that the men of the city, meaning the men of Sodom, what did they do now? Compassed the house around. They surrounded the house. They surrounded the house of our forefather Lot. Read. Both old and young. Old and young. Yeah. So you're gonna see what it means when it says old and young. Old and young goes into older people, the adults and the children. They were all in the spirit of what? Sodom and Gomorrah. The spirit of sodomy. The sodomite spirit. That's the same thing that has been pushed today throughout the earth by the United States of America. They push it through the media. They push it at church. They push it in the schools now to our children. That's why it says old and young. Read. And all the people from every quarter. You see that? All the people from every quarter in the castles, they were coming out. Read. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, mm. Where are the men which came in to thee this night? This they saw the angels say, Where are they? We saw these men come into your house. Where are they? Read. Bring them unto us. Bring them, bring those men unto us. That we may know them. You see how evil they are? Bring the angels that we may have sex with them. That's what they are saying. That's how vile the spirit of Sodom is. It's evil and demonic. You understand? It was happening during the time of Genesis. It's happening today. So how much more do you think it is today? It's worse than you can possibly imagine. Because there's so much technological advancements now that they can do whatever they want. You hear about this artificial intelligence, you have no idea what that thing actually is. You have no idea. It sounds cool, it sounds great. No, 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 no. That thing is of the devil. Artificial intelligence is of the devil. That's why it's called artificial. Artificial intelligence is equivalent to gender fluid. Gender fluid, fella, is not real. It's artificial. It's a social construct. Artificial intelligence is a social construct too. Gender fluid is artificial intelligence. Being gender fluid means you are artificially intelligent. You are an artificially intelligent being who has no boundaries when it comes to sex. You thought artificial intelligence, they saw robot. No, 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 no. It's got nothing to do with that. Now watch this. Give me that in, uh, what verse you went? Verse 5? You ended? Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. Verse 6. No, no, no. Verse 4 and 5. Give me Titus 115. I'm going to show you the mindset of those men and women and children, young daughters and young sons that were traveling to go to Lord's wife, to Lord's house. Read. That's my favorite, sir. Titus 1, verse 15. The book of Titus, chapter 1, verse 15. You okay, it says, the men of, even the men of Sodom. Yes, the men, the men, the men, not women, the men, the men. The women goes into the lesbians and all that. Read. 
and to the pure, all things are pure. The pure unto the pure, all things are pure. The pure things is the laws of God. Go ahead. But unto them that are defiled. And to them that are spiritually and mentally and physically defiled. And unbelieving. And what? And unbelieving. They are unbelieving. They don't believe the word of God. Go ahead. Is nothing pure. Is what? Is nothing pure. Is nothing pure. Go ahead. But even their minds. Even their what? But even their mind uh -huh. and conscience is defiled. Their mind and their conscience is defiled. That's why they wanted to sleep with the angels. How evil is that? Because their mind and their conscience were defiled. You understand? You think they're not going to do it today? You think they're not going to want to do all that? They're going to want to do it today. You understand? Give me that in uh, 2 Timothy 4 verse 3. Read. 2 Timothy 4 verse 3. Second book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 3. Come on. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. They're not going to endure sound doctrine, really. But after their own lust, mm. shall they heap to themselves teachers, having each ear. You see that thing? Go ahead. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, mm. and shall be turned unto fables. They shall be turned unto fables. Fables. Go ahead. And they shall be turned unto fables. You see that? They will be turned unto fables. They're going to depart from the truth. Because their mind and conscience is defiled. What verse you at? Verse 4, sir. Okay, is that it on that? Yes, sir. Okay, now give me First Timothy 4, verse 1 and 2. Come on. First book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 1. Read. Right? Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times... We are in the latter times right now. Go ahead. Shall... Some, some shall depart from the faith. Some will depart from the faith that is written in this book. Some of you are in here. Read. Giving heed to seducing spirits. Giving heed to seducing spirits. Come on. And doctrines of devils. And doctrine of devils. Read. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Come on. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. You see that they have their conscience seared with a hot iron. Even their con their mind and conscience is defiled. That's what the Lord is saying right there. You understand? Now, go back to Genesis 19. Read verse 6 now. The book of Genesis chapter 19 verse 6. Read. And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him. Because the Lord went outside and closed the door behind him. So, so the angels were inside. Go ahead. And said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Don't do this evil thing. Go ahead. Behold now, I have two daughters which have not known men. Which have not known men. They have not dealt with men yet. Read. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Because, guess what, some Israelite camps are teaching that, guess what, gang rape is allowed. Because that's what they, they, that's how they read the scripture. This is some evil stuff. Because you know what, they've got a rape spirit on them. That's why they say that. Lord is saying, these are women in the house. Deal with them as a man deals with a woman instead of dealing with a man. Instead of dealing with an angel. He's not saying, gang rape my daughters. What the hell is this? But that's what they teach. You understand? Just some evil stuff. Read. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. Read. Meaning they came to the shadow of his roof. Meaning they came closer to his house now. Go ahead. And they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came in to sojourn. He says, this one fellow came in to sojourn among us. He comes into our kasi. Go ahead. And he will need be a judge. He wants to judge us. He wants to tell us what to do. Because that's what's going to happen when we go back to war. That's what they're going to say about us. Or now, yes, we're going to do it. We're going to tell drug, drug dealers where to get off with the Bible. Go ahead. Now, will we deal worse with thee? He says, we, that, he says, we're going to deal worse with you than we had planned to deal with these angels. Read. Done with them. Go ahead. And they pressed so upon the men. They, they pressed so upon Lot. Read. Even Lot. Uh -huh. And came near to break the door. You see that thing? They were so, meaning what? They even have a violent spirit. You saw that, you saw that video? Man. I said, man. Call me man. That's the violent spirit they've got. Read. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to death. Meaning what? The angels pulled the Lord back into the house. They pulled Lot back into the house. Go ahead. And shut to the door. And, and shut the door. Come on. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness. You see what they did? They blinded them. 
So the angels blinded the men of Sodom. You, st you think they will stop, ne? Keep reading. Both small and great. Both small and great, meaning the older men and the young men. Read. So that they worried themselves to find the door. They worried themselves, meaning they, they're now they are in the dark looking for the door, right? They are blind. You would think them being blind, that, that demonic spirit will leave. No, 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 no. It became worse. Read. And the men said unto Lord, Hast thou here any besides son in law and mm. thy sons and thy daughters? Yeah, what verse are you in? Verse 12, sir. Okay, verse 11. That's what I want. Read verse 11 again. The book of Genesis, chapter 19, verse 11. Read. And there is most the men that were at the door of the house with blindness. With blindness, come on. Both small and great. Yeah. So that they waited themselves to find the door. They waited themselves to find the door. Meaning what? They never left. They kept looking for the door to enter into the house to deal with, with the angels. Even after the angels blinded them. You understand? Sarah 25 verse 5. No, Sarah 26 verse 5. Okay. Sarah 26 verse 5. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 26 verse 5. Read. There be three things that my heart fears. He says there are three things which my heart fears. Read. And for the fourth I was so afraid. Go ahead. The slender of a city. The slender of a city. Go ahead. The gathering together of an unruly multitude. That was what that, that is what was going on during sorrow. The gathering together of an unruly multitude. Those older the, the, the old and young men that had that sorrow spirit on them. Go ahead. And a false accusation. All these are worse than death. You see that? This is all these, they are worse than death. So what Lot was experiencing, he says it was worse than death. You understand? Okay. Now watch this. Now let's see the judgment of sorrow. Jump down to verse 24 now. Genesis 19, 24. The book of Genesis chapter 19, verse 24. Start of verse 23. Come on. Verse 23. Read. The sun was risen upon the earth mm. when Lot entered into Zohar. So Lot entered into Zohar. He left Sodom and Gomorrah. Go ahead. Then the Lord reigned upon Sodom. The Lord did what? Then the Lord reigned upon Sodom. The Lord reigned upon Sodom, meaning this is Sodom's judgment. And upon Gomorrah, mm. brimstone and fire. Brimstone and fire. Fire and brimstone came down from heaven by the Father. Read. From the Lord out of heaven. From the Lord out of heaven and destroyed those cities. Read. And, and he overthrew those cities and all the plagues and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. You see that thing? So the Lord destroyed the, the nuclear bomb that you see today. Esau is replicating what the Lord did during the time of Sodom and Gomorrah. He's trying to replicate that. So the Lord brought fire from heaven and destroyed the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. That's what the Lord did. You understand? So, so Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed with what? Nuclear fire from the Most High God. Right? Give me Isaiah 13 verse 19. Watch this. Get ready with that book. Bible World, page 148. Mystic Babylon. Come on. The book of Isaiah chapter 13 verse 19. Watch this. And Babylon. And what? And Babylon. Remember, Sodom, how was it destroyed? Sodom and Gomorrah. Fire and brimstone, right? Watch this. Read that again. Verse 19. The book of Isaiah chapter 13 verse 19. Watch this. Go ahead. And, ba and Babylon. And Babylon. Read. The glory of kingdom. The what? The glory of kingdom. Babylon. The glory of kingdoms. Meaning what? The greatest kingdom on earth. Read. The beauty of the Chaldees excellency. The beauty of the Chaldees excellency. Meaning they were the top echelon. Read. Shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Stop. How was Babylon, ancient Babylon destroyed? Not with fire and brimstone. Ancient Babylon of Nebuchadnezzar was not destroyed with fire and brimstone. Isaiah is prophesying about what? Mystic Babylon. Yes, sir. Babylon the Great. That's what he's prophesying about here. So, because remember, Isaiah was during what time period? The time of the kings, right? Yes, sir. Hezekiah. Right? Yes, and who was the empire that had already taken over Northern Kingdom? If you know the answer, stand up and answer the question. Shalom. Shalom, sir. Oh, please. Oh, please, sir. The empire that has taken over Northern Kingdom, sir, 
was the Assyrians. The Assyrians, right? Yes, Who was the king that was going after Hezekiah? Shalomaneser. No. Who knows the answer? Stand up and help him. Think, think, think. Stand up, stand up. Think about the question. Who was the king that wanted to take over Hezekiah? Because Hezekiah is from which tribe? Which kingdom? Judas. Judah. Judah. Yes, so who was trying to take over the kingdom of Judah after taking over northern kingdom? During the time of Hezekiah. Think, think, think. The Assyrian Empire. Sennacherib. Sennacherib. Yes, Give the brother a hand. Okay. Oh, please. So it's Sennacherib. Sennacherib was the, was the Assyrian king. So Isaiah was prophesying during the time of what? The kings and during the time when Northern Kingdom was being taken over by the Assyrians. So that means which empire would come after? The Babylonian Empire. The, the Babylonian empire right? Yes, but which is he's still prophesying about Babylon that will come after the Assyrians, but he's also prophesying about what? Babylon the Great. Babylon the Great because of how this Babylon would be destroyed by fire and brimstone because the ancient Babylon wasn't destroyed by fire and brimstone have a seat go back to Isaiah 13 verse 19 again go to Isaiah chapter 13 verse 19 go ahead and Babylon the glory of kingdoms because America is the glory of kingdoms right the beauty of the child is excellent is the great city you understand go ahead shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. You see that thing? It says, this Babylon is going to be destroyed just like Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. That's what he said right there. You understand? And who's going to do it? The ten horns. The ten kings. They're going to get that in Revelation 17 real quick. Verse 16. The book of Revelation chapter 17 verse 16. Go ahead. And the ten horns. The ten horns is the ten toes. Right? Which thou sowest upon the beast. Upon the beast, meaning supporting the fourth beast, which is America. Go ahead. These shall hate the whore. They're going to hate the whore. Remember, they're supporting the whore. All of a sudden, they hate the whore. How? The Lord made them do it. The same way the Lord made them support them, the Lord is going to make them to turn against them too. Go ahead. And shall make her desolate and naked. Uh -huh. And shall eat her flesh. Uh -huh. And burn her with fire. And do what? And burn her with fire. And burn America with fire. The EU will burn America with fire. Nuclear fire. Just as the Lord overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Read. For God has put in their heart. To the most that God has put in the EU their minds to do what? To fulfill his will. To fulfill his will. The same way the Lord put in their hearts for them to support America, he did the same for them to turn against America and burn America with fire. That's why NATO, the EU, they are building their own military. That's why Donald Trump was throwing tantrums when they were saying they are building their own military. Yes, because the Lord has put in their hearts to do it. You understand? That's what we're reading. Now, Revelation chapter 17, verse 5. Because this Babylon that's going to be destroyed with fire and brimstone is Babylon the Great. Read. The book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 5. Go ahead. And upon a forehead mm. was the name written. Read. Mystery, Babylon the Great. Mystery, Babylon the Great. The mother of Harlot. The mother of prostitutes. Read. And abominations of the earth. They are the, abom they are the abominable filth of the earth. America is an abominable filth of the earth. Read. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints. Okay, that's it on that. That's it on that. Okay. Now give me a go back to Revelation 11 verse 8 now. Because that's where we were. I know some of you forgot already. Okay, read. The book of Revelation chapter 11 verse 8. Go ahead. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. Their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. Come on. Which spiritually. Which what? Which spiritually. Which spiritually. Go ahead. Is called Sodom. And Egypt. It's called Sodom and Egypt. So America is spiritual Sodom. America is spiritual Sodom. Read. Where also our Lord was crucified. So now let's see. Give me the first link now. You understand? Give me the first link of Wikipedia. Okay, I'm going to show you the LGBT rights in the US. Okay, watch this. 
The first link I sent you, the Wikipedia link, okay? Yeah, but why are you doing it while the people are watching? Okay, okay, blow it up big. We need to see this thing. Now I want you to read that, okay? Yep, the title, read that. Reading from wikipedia.com, LGBT rights in the United States. LGBT rights in the United States. Now go, go down, start there when it says lesbian. Lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender rights in the United States rank among the highest in the world. You see that? They rank among the highest in the world. That's why it says Americans call spiritual sorrow. Because they are sodomite, they are sodomy, right? The, the rights of sodomy, they outrank all nations on earth. That's why Americans call spiritual sorrow. And America pushes homosexuality throughout the earth. They push homosexuality on the continent of Africa where we are. And South Africa was the third country on the continent to, uh, to, uh, to legalize same-sex relations. Okay, read. With public opinion mm. and jurisprudence changing significantly since the late 1980s. Since the late 1980s, go ahead. By the early 2020s, mm. an overwhelming... An overwhelming... 2020, Bella, that's now. Read. An overwhelming majority of Americans approved of the legality of same-sex marriage. Because Obama helped that day. Obama helped it, Peg. I thought Obama, when he came into office, he pushed the, L, the, the rights of the, the, the LGBTs. He, he made them come to pass. Remember, Obama is a Hamite. You understand? Obama is a Hamite. So it's no, it's, it's no surprise that he would push that. You understand? Read. In 1961, the beginning with Illinois, Illinois states began to declare decriminalize same-sex sexual activity. You see that they began to decriminalize it because it was a criminal offense. Go ahead. And in 2003, through Lawrence v. Texas, all remaining laws against same-sex sexual activity were invalidated. Were invalidated, meaning what? They now could do it. Go ahead. In 2004, beginning with Massachusetts, 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 go ahead. State began to offer same sex marriage, mm. and in 2015, through Obergefell v. Hodges, all states were required to offer it. You see that they were required by law to offer it, right? Because same sex marriage is not a marriage, marriage is between men and women, so that's not a marriage. It's just a relation. It's a same-sex relation, not same-sex same marriage, because marriage is made up of men and women. Read. Right? In many states and municipalities, LGBT Americans were explicitly protected from discrimination in employment, housing, and access to public accommodation. You see that? That's why you hear brothers and sisters in the in the in the entertainment world say they became, they did they they, they pretended to be gay. Just so they can be able to get some kind of, they can get high up in the in the in the world, something like that. You've heard many stories about that, right? Yeah. Okay, that's it on that. Now give me the next article. Yep. So remember, it says in the 1960s, right? Remember the 1960s is the turbulent 60s where our people were rising up. You know, black consciousness movements, the civil rights, and so on and so forth. Where people was rising up, they were pushing this homosexual agenda, this transgender agenda upon us. But it started way earlier than that. Watch this. Read that. Reading from wikipedia.com. Uh -huh. Christine Jorgensen. Christine Jorgensen. So Christine Jorgensen is actually this. Rise it up. Raise it up a little bit. Raise it up. Okay, that raise it up. Come on, some more. Up, 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 up. Stop right there. That's a man. You see, they were confused. That's a man. I mean, look, I mean, me when I saw when I saw when I was doing my research, I looked at it immediately. I'm like, that's a man right there. Look at the face. Look at the bone structure. 
That's a man. You understand? Look at the fingers. That's a man. That's a man right there. Okay. Now, read read that. Um, just read that uh, the first line. Christine Jorgensen, May 13, 1926 to May 3rd, 1989, was an American trans woman. You see that? Was an American trans woman. You see what year was this? 1926. Go ahead. Who was the first person to become widely known in the United States for having sex reassignment surgery. So she became a, he became a Decepticon. Transformers. You understand? So, go ahead. She had no, no, that's not a she. That's a he. That's a man. We are not going to enable this behavior. That's a man. He what? He. You see, he's even confused. He a what? It's a he. That's a man. He had a successful career as an actress. As an actor. Singer. Uh -huh. And recording artist. So, what you will notice, what you want to notice is that these people, then, when you read about them, they start to give you their qualifications first. Because they want to confuse them. You know, even though they are such and such, they were able to accomplish one, two, three. So they want you to focus on their quote-unquote accomplishments. No. Don't focus on that. That's all I wanted there. Okay. Uh, next article. Okay, come on. Now, read that. Reading from wikipedia.com. Martin Rothblatt. Rothblatt. So, this is a man. I know you're confused. That's a man. That right there, that's a man. You understand? That is a man. See, brothers and sisters are lost. That's a man right there. This is how deep America's trans agenda, America's transgender agenda goes. Look how deep it goes. Some of you are confused that that's a, that's a man. Look at him. You see, everybody done call. Even the sisters are confused. Okay, now read that part. Read that. Martin Aliana Rothblatt. Because his name is Martin. So he changed the he, he changed the name Martin. So that it sounds like it's a woman. No, that's a man. Martin. Okay, go ahead. Born October 10, 1954. Is an American lawyer, author, entrepreneur, and transgender rights advocate. You see that? And transgender rights advocate. So they have to mention that. Now scroll down, scroll up, move up, up, up. Brothers, are we ready? Are we ready to switch? Yes, sir. Okay, let's switch now. Okay, scroll up. I need you to scroll up. Will this still be on? This. Okay, keep going. Early life and education. Now read that. Early life and education. Early life and education of Martin. Ross Blatt was born was born 1954 into a Jewish family in Chicago. So he's Amalek. He's Amalek, okay? So personal life. He says personal life. In 1982, Roth Blatt married Bina Aspen. This is a black woman. A realtor from Campton, California. Okay. Mm, yeah. Roth Blatt and Aspen each had a child from previous relationship and legally adopted each other's children. They went on to have two more children together. In 1994, at age 40, she came out as a transgender. This is a man, 40 years old. He came out and changed his name to Martin Aliana Rothblatt. He has since become a vocal advocate for transgender rights. Okay, next article. Yeah, this is an article that is written by Harold Breckman, but is from the, the article that, you see, Martin wrote an article called The Apartheid of Sex. Okay? Yes, he, he compares the apartheid that we went through to being discriminated as a transgender. You can't make it up. You understand? The apartheid that we went through here in Mzanzi for sure. You can't make this up. Okay? Now, I want you to read that. Martin Rothblatt, the apartheid of sex 15 years later. So, 15 years later. Okay, he wrote this in 2009, this article. But... The only thing that I want you to focus on is the 
the codes. Okay. The text highlighted in bold. Yeah, that's the one I want. So read that, Martin and me. Martin and me. Uh -huh. Our efforts to simplify reality cheat others and cheat ourselves. He says our efforts to simplify re re reality. When he says re simplify reality, you know what he's talking about? Male and female. He says that's, he says that's our effort to simplify reality. It's simple already. Okay. It's already simple. Male and female made he them. But he says we are making an effort to simplify reality. But when they are making an effort to complicate reality, ne? read that again. Our effort to simplify reality cheat others. He says that cheats others and cheat ourselves. Meaning from their sexual deviancy. Scroll up. I want the next highlighted part. The next bold. The structure of the argument. The structure of the argument now. Well, listen up. In the future. In the future. Labeling people as bad, as bad, as male or female will be considered just as unfair as South Africa's now abolished practice stamping black or white on people's ID cards. You can't make this up. He's comparing... When we were being oppressed here in Mzanzi by the apartheid regime, which they are still doing, by the way, okay? So, he says, us being labeled black, you know, knee swart men on this side, um, clear men on, on, only, ne? right? Yes, sir. Blacks only, whites only toilets, blacks only toilets, blacks only shops, whites only shops. He says, when we were being classified like this, She's, he's comparing what we went through to what they are going through. You understand? To want to fulfill their lusts. You can't make this up. Read it again. In the future, labeling people at birth as male or female will be considered just as unfair as South Africa's now abolished practice. Is uh, it's now abolished practice? Go ahead. Stamping. Black or white on people's ID cards. It wasn't just on people's ID cards. When it says people's ID cards, because they didn't have Tom passes, we did. You understand? White people didn't have that. We did. We all had to have letters to travel from Pretoria to um, Alexander. You understand? Now, scroll up. Because he wrote the book, The Apartheid of Sex. Keep going. Read up. Scroll, scroll up. Come on. All of this is to justify sexual deviancy. Okay, read that. The 1990s context. Mm. For most people, society, for most people, society's gender rules are so powerful that they simply go with the flow. You see that? For most people, society's gender rules are so powerful that they simply go with the flow. Meaning, the people are going with the flow of reality. Male and female made he them. Cause, cause how were they born? Because that's the question that nobody asked. How were they born? How did they come into this world? Their father and their mother dealt with one with another and they was born. Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. But in every society, there are, there are the free spirits. You see that? So they are called free spirits now. Gender fluid. Artificially intelligent. Read. They're stubborn. They are stubborn. They insisted on what? Sexual deviancy. Read. In the 1960s, they fought for civil rights. I want you to pay attention to this. It says, in the 1960s, they fought for civil rights. Who's the they? Black people. We were fighting, our forefathers were fighting for civil rights in the 60s. In the 50s, in the 40s, we're still doing it today. In the 70s, we're doing it with the machine machining and all that. It says, we fought for civil rights, right? Yes, but watch this. In the 1960s, they fought for civil rights. Watch this. In the 1990s, they fought for gender rights. No, 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 not fought. Read again, read it right. In the 1990s, they fight for gender rights. So they are comparing... What we, our forefathers did, fighting for civil rights in the 60s, to them fighting for gender, gender being gender fluid 
in in now in the in in these in these days we're living in. So guess what? That's why the femi the, the remember the feminist movement evolved into what into the LGBT community. The civil rights movement evolved into what evolved into this feminism. Remember, it was the civil rights movement which evolved, which actually morphed into what feminism. Feminism morphed into what the LGBT community because the LGBT is the fourth wave of feminism. The LGBT is the fourth wave of feminism. So the the the, the homosexuals they realize that you know what we're gonna use this movement to topple ours, to advance ours, and they did it. So the feminists they use the civil rights movement to exalt themselves because they, they use the civil rights movement as a stepping stone to push the feminist agenda. So now the feminist agenda are now being used by the sodomites to what to add to add to to what to advance themselves. That's what's going on here. You understand? Okay, scroll up. Brothers, are we ready with this other speaker? Yes, sir, sir. So what do I need to do? Uh, when, when it goes off, so you just pick that one. It's, it's already on. I'll, I'll switch here, sir. Okay, all right. Okay, scroll up. Did you let the people know online? Let them know yes, sir. that we're going to be um, uh, low chain, but the class is still continuing. Okay, so I want you now listen to this 1960 prelude. Read that. The 1960s prelude the apartheid of sex is every bit as harmful. He says, The apartheid of sex is every bit as harmful. So they are comparing, they say, The apartheid of sex is harmful, just like what? Painful and oppressive as the apartheid of race. So they are saying, The pain that we went through during apartheid and we're still going through is the same pain that they are going through to fulfill their sexual lusts and desires. You cannot make this up. You cannot make this ish up. This is evil, man. But guess what? That's what's going on today. Our people consenting to this because why? They don't, they allow these people to just do whatever the hell they we, we don't hate them, but we're going to teach them that say the Lord. They must repent. Okay? Scroll up. Yep, that's it right there. Read that. The pre 1860s background. Now, I'll pay attention here. Pay close attention. Read it. The feminist insistence upon seeing it. Didn't want to be labeled again. Or no, that's an in, that, that, that woman is an engineer. A woman engineer. Women in tech. They don't like that. They say, just say, um, we are in tech. That's what they say. So the feminists, they were fighting because they were saying, no, we want to be equal with men, right? And the feminist movement, Pella, it was, it was actually, the reason why the feminist movement was successful was because of the black woman. The black woman joined the white woman in her problems with her white men. When the white woman got what she wanted, the black woman was left by herself, independent and alone. While the white woman had her man back and married to him and support him while the black woman is alone, fragile, you understand? You're, that's what's going on today. That's what you see with our sisters. Okay, read again. The feminist insistence upon seeing individuals as individuals. He says you must see individuals as individuals. Don't say women, don't say men. That's the feminist, right? Go ahead. Regardless of sexual biology. Meaning men. Because the feminist agenda was they wanted to be equal to men, which they can't. Read. Can now be carried to the next logical step. Stop. What is the next? What What is the next logical step in feminism? Keep reading. Individuals are individuals, not sex types. Homosexuality. That's the next phase of feminism. Because we had a class. I think it was Shameless Daughters of Zion, feminism. We went over there, but you see here they are telling you very clearly 
The feminist insistence upon seeing individuals as individuals, regardless of sexual biology, can now be carried to the next logical step. The next logical step of feminism was what? The LGBTQ community. So LGBT is the fourth wave of feminism. Understand that thing. Okay? Not sex types. Because sex types, you know what that means? Male and female. That's sex types. Meaning what? It's gender fluid. We're confused. I am an it now. You understand? Okay, oh please. Now, read that again. Pre-1860s. The pre-1860s. Go ahead. Background. The feminist insistence upon seeing individuals as individuals, regardless of sexual biology, can now be carried to the next logical step. Individuals are individuals, not sex types. He says individuals are individuals, not sex types. Okay, so the next logical step in fem, because the feminists are actually upset because the LGBT has hijacked their movement. Mm. They say payback is a what? Mm. <laughs> Scroll up. Scroll up, come on. Yep, now read that. Watch this, between past and future. Between past and future. Because remember, this is excerpts from the book that was written by Martin. Okay, read. Sexual orientation in the third millennium. Is, is a sexual orientation in the third millennium. Read. Will evolve to what a unisexual model, model because male or female sex types will fade away. That's it. Now, that's the next logical step from feminism. So, from feminism, this is the next logical step. Okay? Read it again, so we understand what's going on here. Come on. Sexual orientation in the third millennium will evolve to what a unisexual model, because male or female sex types will fade away. It says male or female sex types will fade away. I mean, that's what's going on now. What is this talking about? Gender being gen gender fluid, gender fluidism. Hmm? Go ahead. I just made a word up. Gender fluidism. Read. Persons of any genitals. Persons of any genitals will feel free to identify themselves as only. Stop. There's a persons of any uh, any sexual organs will will be free to identify themselves as what. As olive, as olive, magenta. That these are colors. Mm. Olive, magenta. Go ahead. Coral, coral, ebony, ebony, and ivory. Go ahead. Or white, or white, or as femi, as femi, butch, 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 mm. tough, mm. tender, or trans. Meaning what? They can choose whatever name they want to attach to themselves. They make your, he says, your reproductive organ don't mean nothing. Your body structure don't mean nothing. The body parts that the Lord has given you to de define you as a man or a female, he says, those, they go away. They don't count. That's artificial intelligence, brothers mm. and sisters. Brothers and sisters, artificial intelligence, we're reading about it right here. Okay? Why am I seeing this now? I'm not seeing properly. This needs to be blown up so I can see. Okay? So, Liam, do you see the article? Yes, sir. Okay. Read. With this continuum of sexual possibilities. You see that? With this continuum of sexual possibilities. You see what this is about? This is about fornication. Sexual sins. Because they are telling you, they are telling you what the LGBTQ is all about. Sexual deviancy. Sexual possibilities. They didn't say gender possibilities. They said sexual possibilities because it's all about sex. Read the part again. With this continuum of sexual possibilities. That part is letting you know it's got nothing to do with, no, I was born this way. No, 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 it's got nothing to do with that. It's got everything to do with sexual being, with sexual deviant behavior. Read. Gay, straight, and even bisexual will lose all meaning. They will lose all meaning. 
Because the only sexual genders that make that 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 have any kind of sense is male and female, how God made them. That's it. Okay, scroll up. They are telling you what's gonna happen in the future. The future that they are talking about is now. Ray. Okay, that's it on that, right? Okay, now give me the next article. Yeah, that's it right there. Now, go back to Genesis 19, verse 11. Genesis 19, verse 11. Okay, come on. Genesis chapter 19, verse 11. Read. Right. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness. This is now the men of Sodom. Okay, go ahead. Both small and great. Both small and great, meaning men and men and children. Read. Right? So that they waited themselves to find the door. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. So, so now, here is older men and young men. They went to our fourth, to the Abraham, um, um, the nephew of Abraham, Abraham Lot. You understand? So young and old. So I told you that they're gonna, uh, they're gonna also infiltrate the children in the schools. And we're about to read about it now. Now, blow up the blow. Yeah, that's it right there. Now, read that. Reading from Seattle's Children.org. Seattle's Children.org. Okay, go ahead. Seattle's Children's Hospital. Gender clinic. Gender clinic. What is that? What is a gender clinic? Okay, go ahead. Gender affirming care at Seattle's children. It says gender affirming care. Gender affirming. So what does that mean? That means that they have to condition the children from young age to condition them to become what? To become gay. Lesbians. You understand? Go ahead. Seattle's, Seattle's Children's Gender Clinic provides gender affirming medical care for adolescents. You see that? This is crazy, man. Read. Whose gender identity is different from their sexual, from their sex at birth. You can't make this up. It says their identity, their gender identity, because there's gender identity and um, actual identity. Actual gender. Gender identity and actual gender. Gender identity is a social construct where actual gender is the one that you was born with who the Lord gave unto you. You understand? Okay, read that part again. Who's what? Whose gender identity is different from their sex at birth. Their gender identity is different from their sex at birth. Because at birth, we can be able to identify whether this is a boy or girl. You understand? We can tell. I'll prove it. Give me Leviticus 12 and 1. We're coming back in. I'm going to show you that this thing of, you know, gender identity and actual gender guess what they are trying to go they are going they are what they want to go against leviticus 12. now read that the book of leviticus chapter 12 verse 1 watch this and the lord spake unto moses saying read speak unto the children of israel saying mm. if a woman have conceived seed if a woman does what if a woman have conceived seed. If a woman conceives a seed, a seed is a sperm of a man. Read. And born a man child. And does what? And born a man child. So at birth, they will know what type of what 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 was the gender of the child. And born a man child. How did they know that it was a man child? Because they saw of what they saw what they saw his reproductive organs. Or this is a man. Read again. Speak the book of Leviticus, chapter 12, verse 2. Go ahead. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed and born a man child, and born a man child, read, then she shall be unclean seven days. Go ahead. According to the days of the separation of the infirmity, shall she be unclean. Read. And in the eighth day, in the what? And in the eighth day, to confirm furthermore that this is a man. What's going to happen on the eighth day after this child is born who is a man? Read. The flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. You see that? 
the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. So they circumcised the flesh of his foreskin on his penis. That's what we're reading in Leviticus 12. That's how we know that at birth, that's your actual gender. This gender identity is artificial intelligence. You understand? It's not biblical. So they are doing, they are, they are moving. Is he not moving? Is he not going? He's supposed to be going, Ben. Call the brothers. Read it again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 12, verse 3. Go ahead. And in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. The flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. Letting you know this is a boy. Go ahead. And she shall then continue in the blood of a puri purifying three and thirty days. Okay, go ahead. And she shall touch no hallowed thing, nor come into the sanctuary until the days of a purifi purifying be fulfilled. Read. But if she bear a married child. Stop right there. If she gives birth to a girl, how is she going to know? Because what we're reading, the Lord is telling us how we identified that this is a boy that this is a girl based on what? Based on their sexual reproductive organs. Read. But if she bear a male child. But if he, she bear a male child. She gives birth to a, a, a girl. Go ahead. Then she shall be unclean to weeks. And in her separation. She shall continue. She shall continue in the blood of a purifying three score and six days. Read it again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 12, verse 5. But if she bear a maid child, then she shall be unclean to weeks, as in her separation, and she shall continue in the blood of a purifying three score and six days. Okay, so are we good online? Yes, sir. Okay, read it again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 12, verse 5. Go ahead. But if she bear a maid child, then she shall be unclean to weeks, as in her separation, and she shall continue in the blood of a purifying three score and six days. So, guess what? We were able to identify that this is a boy at birth. We are able to identify that this is a girl at birth. So, this thing of sexual identity is what? It's artificial intelligence. That's what it is. You understand? That's what it is. Artificial intelligence. Don't be confused. They talk about algorithms and they just be confusing you. They are talking about this. Artificial intelligence goes back to this garbage that we're reading right now. You understand? So go back to the article now. Seattle's Children Gender Clinic provides gender-affirming medical care. Gender-affirming medical care is talking about what? Injection of hormones into children. That's gender. That's a gender-affirming medical care. They are talking about that. Read right? Whose gender identity is different from their sex at best. So it's letting you know this is a sickness. And children cannot out of nowhere say, me, I'm like this. No, it's pushed unto them by the parents. Look at uh, the, 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 the son, Zion. The Zion. Z that's, we're not going to, no, Zion. That's his name. His name that his mother gave. The son of Dwayne Wade. The husband of Gabriel Union. You understand? They are pushing evil to that boy. So much so that now the boy believes that he's a girl. And he's making out with an Edomite boy. You can't make this up. On social media. And the biological mother is trying to get the custody of the boy. Which he should. Which he should. Because guess what? They are destroying that child. You understand? Gabriel, you know, don't have no kids. That's why she has no she has no remorse whatsoever but to push that thing on that boy. You understand? Something that will not be reversed. Okay? Because now I'm sure he's, he's, he's probably taking what? Hormones now. That The stuff we're reading here. Go ahead. Who do not identify with the traditional definitions of male or female? You see that? It says they do not identify with the traditional, traditional means biblical. With the biblical what? Definitions of male or female. The same definitions we just read in Leviticus 12. They don't agree with that. Keep reading. We accept new patients 
ages 9 to 16. You can't make this up. What the hell does a nine-year-old know that they don't want to be a male anymore? A nine-year-old, they are concerned about farts. That's what a nine-year-old is concerned with. A nine-year-old is concerned with toys. Hmm? You understand? Playing on the street with a soccer ball. That's all they care about. That's what a nine-year-old concerns himself with. You understand? In the world. Go ahead. Patients ages 17 and older and patients who have not yet started puberty will be directed to community resources. You see, because these ones are older, they need more special attention. Go ahead. Our clinic primarily provides gender-affirming medical care, such as puberty blockers. You see that? Puberty blockers. What is that? That right there is medication. You understand? Rick? And gender-affirming hormones. You see that? Gender affirming hormones, meaning to affirm their gender that they have dreamed up in their mind. Letting you know where the problem is. Their problem is up here. The problem is the soft way. You understand? Go ahead. That's why when we're reading the 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 the, the, the you know the the when we're looking at those names, Martin and all that, they start giving you their accolades, their accomplishments, quote unquote. So you focus on that. But the software is broken. Okay. Read. Brief mental health support. Why do they need that? Why do they need mental support? It says brief mental health support. Brief. Because they know this thing, psychologically, it messes up with your mind. They know that. That's why we see people coming out and say they regret they regret actually going as far as to do what to do surgery. Now they cannot go back. Go ahead. Brief mental health support focused on family decision making and mental health documentation prior to initiating gender affirming care is also available. So you see what when it says focus on family decision making and mental health documentation. They give you books and all that for you to read. So what the hell does a nine-year-old know about um, mental health? Go ahead. If you are looking for gender-affirming mental health services only, or for ongoing mental health support, here are some community resources. The point here is this. They mess up with your mind. This stuff that they do to our kids, our children, they mess up with our mind. Because this um, comprehensive sex education is coming to this. Comprehensive sex education is a, is a what? Is a gateway to this stuff. And comprehensive sex education was approved by the government through Njimu Tsehwa. Njimu Tsehwa pushed that garbage in the schools. Comprehensive sex education, when they educate the children on what do people do when they have sex? What mother and father do in the bedroom? They even bring sex toys and all that to show the children to touch them. That's what they do. It's an industry now. So now a five-year-old, a six-year-old, their mind will be messed up. You understand? Okay, go ahead. Our team fully accept and treat such individual, individual with respect. They don't respect them. Go ahead. That one, scroll down. Yeah? These are the services they provide. I want, I want you to see the services. Services we provide. Mm -hmm. Puberty blockers. Click there. Yeah, read that. Some people want to delay puberty from progressing. They want to delay puberty, right? Watch this. This option is available to youth who have started puberty but who have not yet completed puberty. Mm. The medicine to block puberty is called whatever. Gonadotropin. 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 Gonadotropin releasing hormone mm. agonist. It stops the body from making the hormones that lead to puberty changes. You see that? So they want to stop it before the child starts to develop certain feelings, right? And all that. Yeah. This white man is the devil, man. Really? Puberty delay is temporary. If you stop taking the medicine, you will go through you'll go through puberty of sex you were born into. You see that? 
It says this thing it says if you want if you stop taking the medicine you'll go through the puberty of sex you were born into so which means that the, listen they are telling you not only do they do they do they condition you psychologically but they also want to condition the body chemically yeah they want to condition the body chemically go ahead we work with you and your family to decide if this is a good choice for you. You see that? If this is a good choice for you, because when Ish hit the fan, they're going to say, but you made the decision. You made the decision for your child to, to, to be a transformer. You understand? Go ahead. We also talk about the cost and the best time to start. Okay, scroll down. Yep, read that. Gender affirming hormones. Gender affirming hormones. Read that, click that. Gender affirming hormones help make a person's physical body match their inner gender identity. You see that thing? I'm going to show you how evil this white man is. This white man is the devil the Bible speaks of. You understand? Ecclesiastes 7 verse 29. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 29. Go ahead. Lo, this only have I found, that God has made men upright. God has made men upright from the beginning. He made them male and female from the beginning. But what has men done? What has the sons of men do? But, what have they done? Go ahead. But they have sought out many inventions. That's the inventions we are reading about right now. These are the inventions that they found out. Read again the definition gender affirming hormones. Gender affirming hormones Read. help make a person's physical body match their inner gender identity. Meaning how they feel. No, but I feel like a woman. Women will be saying, no, but I feel like a man. They say, you feel like a man? Don't worry. We've got medication for that. You understand? And the type of medication that they create, how does it get created? Guess what? These medications are created in the labs. Isn't it? And how do they make sure that the, the, the chemicals used, they actually are compatible? You know what they use? They use algorithms. They use algorithms to sequence these type of chemicals to mix them together. So guess what? Who's going to be responsible for building those algorithms to sequence those chemicals to make sure that they create that pill to destroy your child? Because your child, they feel like this. Hmm? This is crazy. Go ahead. These hormones let a person develop in a way that is different from the sex they were born into. You see that? So what are they doing? They are changing the way you look at yourself, which is how God made you. How, if God, God made you female, they say no. Well, if you feel like a man, but you are, you are a female, we're going to change that. Because according to them, the Lord made a mistake. You see what they are doing? They are mocking the most High God. That's what Esau is doing. Esau, this white man, is always trying to find ways to mock the majesty on high. He's going to pay for that thing. He's going to pay for it. Read on. For people interested in feminizing hormones. Feminizing hormones. You understand? Men wanting to be men wanting to be women, they wanna take feminizing hormones. Go ahead. Estrogen is the main hormone used. Estrogen. Go ahead. For people interested in masculinizing hormones. Masculinizing hormones is women wanting to be men. Go ahead. Testosterone is primarily used. You see that? These testosterone and estrogen. They are being used in these, these individuals who feel like, no, they feel like a woman and they are a man. They feel like a man and they are a woman. So your child wakes up and says, I feel like a goat. What's going to happen? By the way, that's coming. Yeah, that's coming. Your child will wake up one day and say, no, I feel like a dog. So what's going to happen? Because that's what's coming. That's why it's called transgender. That's why it's called transgender because it's not limited to quote-unquote human beings. 
it transcends humans. It goes into animals also. And you know how they can they they, they get in there? Because now they, they, they cloning animals. Yes, so you think they're not going there? Of course they are going there. And you know how they go in there? They go in there through viruses. They go they go there through zoonosis. Let's see the next point. Okay, come on. Nah, I'm not it done. Okay. Okay, just read that. Partnership with what? Partnership with Autism Center. Okay, jump down. Brief what? Brief mental health support. Brief. They say brief. Meaning what? Because remember, these, 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 um, these surgeries are not free. These services are not free. You pay. So that's why they say we give you a brief mental health support. Meaning what? We've got other people also. You're not the only one who wants to do this. So when it says brief, we only just gonna some people for, support you for a while. After that, you're on your own. You understand? That's what they are saying right there. Okay, next article. Is there another article? No, sir. Okay, now, nah, now, nah. no, that's it. That's it on there. Don't show that yet. Don't show that yet. Okay, okay. So now. Um, let me see, let me see. Yeah. So what I want to do is now I want you to go to the videos now that I sent. I want you to go to those videos that I sent. Read Revelation 11 verse 8. Okay, are the people still seeing this? No, sir. Okay. Now I want you to go to the videos that I sent last week. Okay. Read that Revelation 11 verse 8. The book of Revelation chapter 11 verse 8. Go ahead. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. If they are dead bodies, the day is talking about us. We will be in the street of the great city, which is Babylon the great, and wherever they have rule, which is the whole earth. Read. Which spiritually is called Sodom. So America is spiritual Sodom. America is spiritual Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, I'm going to show you there's this transgender agenda or how deep it goes. Because this thing, it confuses the mind. That's why what you're about to see, you'll see how confused this man is. He's confused, okay? Play the video. You're gonna, you're gonna put that up and you're gonna let everybody else see it? Well, everybody well, loves you're confronted it. by a trans woman. Pause, pause, pause. Hide it. Look, look at that. That's a man. A man wearing a dress. And high heels. You understand? Holding a handbag. That's a man right there. That's a man. Okay? Now play on. Everybody loves it. No, they I don't think so. They take pictures of it. They post it. Uh-huh. Nine out of ten customers love it. Yeah. You know what? It's bullshit. No, what you're spouting is bullshit. Uh, no, it's not. Trans it women are women, sir. That sign is bullshit. I'll tell you what. Just check it out. It ain't bullshit. I'm telling you right now, as a trans woman, trans women are women. Do well, I'm telling you, as a man, that's bullshit. Uh huh. It is. It's total bullshit. Okay. You know what? Nobody confronts your ass. That's the problem. Really? If they'd say, really? What the? You want to bet? What the fuck is you going on? Do you know how many there? people you've embarrassed at, oh, at wow. City Hall? Me and there have to, to city there hall, have really. to tolerate that shit. You're an embarrassment to the city, sir. You are an embarrassment to this city. I am a pillar in this sure city. Everybody knows. I'm a pillar in this. Now, oh, you yeah. do that. Do you know why? Every time some bullshit like this happens, huh? my sales go up because people are wanting this. Side. Really? 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 We're going to show them the side of you. And you do it. You do it. You do it really good. Because guess hopefully what? Hopefully we can wake you up. You are fucking nuts. Let's you up are nuts. Sir. You're not a woman. You don't look like a woman. You don't act like a woman. Really? You're fucked really? in the head. What's oh, wrong really? with you? I'm fucked in the head. I am. I am confronting you. <laughs> yes, sir. That you are an asshole. And I'm confronting you that just because I walked into your store, you felt the need to take your sign down. Well, I, I was. I was, I was thinking. I. I was thinking. I was going to. Uh, uh, be nice. You know this old man. I like him. He's direct. He speaks the truth. 
You understand? He's uncompromising. Play the next video. You gonna give me my fucking money back? Excuse me, sir. There's a young man in here. Absolutely. Excuse me, it's ma'am. It is ma'am. I can call the police if you'd like me to. You need to settle down. You need to settle down and mind your business, okay? Ma'am. Once That's again, man, right there. I said both of you. No, you said sir. Once again, it's ma'am. I actually said both of you guys. It was a general. Right beforehand, you fucking said sir. Sir. Motherfucker, take it outside. If you want to call me sir, oh. again, I will show you a fucking sir. You see the the level of look at the level of aggression. The level of aggression is what we read in Sodom and Gomorrah. That's how they were in Sodom and Gomorrah. They even went as far as to want to break down the door of Lot when the angels were in there. Yes, you understand? Yes, Play it again. You gonna give me my fucking money back? Excuse me, sir. There's a young man in here. And you want to Excuse me, it's ma'am. It is ma'am. I can call the police if you'd like me to. You need to settle down. You need to settle down and mind your business, okay? Ma'am. Once again, ma'am. I said both of you. No, you said sir. Once again, it's ma'am. I actually said both of you guys. It was a general. Right beforehand, you fucking said sir. Sir? Motherfucker, take it outside. If you want to call me sir again, I will show you a fucking sir. I apologize. Motherfucker. I apologize now. Look at that. That's a man. I need your corporate number. Because I'm going to talk, call them and talk about how I was misgendered several times in this store. I need your corporate number now. Get it for me now. I'm going to ask you to calm down and stop cussing. Give me your corporate number. Well, I'm going to ask you for the fifth time to stop calling me a man. Because quite clearly I am not. Okay, that's it. But what I'm showing you is, this is how sick this world is. And America pushes this throughout the earth every single day through the media. They push this garbage into our schools. Guess what? We are not going to bow down to what America is pushing upon us. That's why I'm really proud of to see African leaders standing up and say, we're not going to bow down to that. We're not going to allow that thing to plague our countries because what? We've got morals in our country. Okay? Play the next video. This is that guy, Matt Walsh. So he went around because the people were confused what a woman is. Okay, now play. What is a woman? Why do you ask the question? Pause. Look at him. Just look at the guy answering the question. Look at even the way he's sitting. You understand? Okay, play. I just really like to know. What do you think the answer to that question is? Well, I'm, I'm asking. That's why I came to a college professor who, who's, this is your, this is what you do. What other kinds of answers have you gotten? A lot of like this, where you're where you're not answering, and I've gotten a lot of that. So I think it's interesting that you that you say that some of the people you've you've um, interviewed have been um, reluctant to answer it, and I think that has a lot to do with the way the questions that preceded it and the the way that you've conducted yourself in the interview. How have I conducted myself? How do you think you've conducted yourself? You, you, <laughs> you just really don't want to answer the questions, do you? I, I came today very willing and, and enthusiastic about answering questions about women's and gender sexuality studies, which is so the you wanted that to, I do. you wanted to answer questions about women's studies, and so shouldn't the, the first answer you should be able to provide is what exactly is a woman? Well, it's, it, for me, it's, it's actually a really simple answer, and that's a person who identifies as a woman. But what are they identifying as? As a woman. But, but what is that? As a woman. Do you know what a circular definition is? I do. It's sort of like what you're doing right now, where a woman is, is a woman. Mm -hmm. Well, because you're seeking what we would call in my field of work an essentialist definition of gender. I think it sounds like you would like me to give you a set of biological or cultural characteristics that are associated with one gender or the other. I'm not seeking any type of definition. I'm just seeking a definition. Yeah, and I gave you... A woman has its own duty. Pause. And a man... So, so... Obviously, a professor could not answer what a woman is. So now he decided, let me go and ask black men. And black men will answer the question. Play, play. 
has its own duty, and a lady cannot duty the duty of a man, and a man cannot do a duty of a woman. Can a man become a woman? No. No? No. What about a transgender? Pause. You see how easy it is to answer the question? Can a man be a woman? No. Can a woman be a man? No. Go ahead. Transgender? No. No? It will look like to, if you want to become a lady but you're a man, you have something wrong in something your wrong. mind. Something you see wrong that? in Pause. your family. Fam There's a something wrong in your mind, something wrong in your family, meaning you're sick. Something's wrong up here. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. Something wrong in you. What about if someone was non-binary? Come again? Non-binary? Uh-huh. Do you know? Like non... Like uh, someone is... is uh, you're not a woman, you're not a man. <laughs> yeah, someone's like... Someone is, is neither. There's something else. Is that... I'm not a He's saying we have never seen things like those. Paul. <laughs> That's funny, man. He said, we've never seen anything like that. We've never seen things like those. You understand? But what I like about them is that they just answer the question. A college professor could not answer the question. But you know why? He can answer it. He knows the answer. But because of what? He doesn't want to be fired. He doesn't want to have to explain himself. He doesn't want to have to justify himself. He just said, let me just go with the flow. That's the same thing we read in the article earlier on, written by Martin. I'm not going to say Martin. No, it's Martin. Okay? Now, keep playing. He has a penis for a woman. He has a vagina. So we stop. 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 That's what we read in Leviticus 12. That's what we read in Leviticus, the 12th chapter. Go ahead. It's a lady. This is a man. What if it's a woman with a... What if it's a woman with a penis? What? That... People are laughing. Is that, is that a dumb question? <laughs> Let's say if you want to sleep a woman, definitely you'll do sex. Sex with a woman. Yeah. And you f*** the vagina, is it? But yeah. for the man, where do you f***? He asked that question. I don't know all the logistics of it. Uh, <laughs> Based on what I'm saying, would you ever want to move to America? Let's see. <laughs> so they say no. No. Dr. Marcy Bowers. You see, easy. Easy answers because they know America is of the devil. Okay, play on. Dr. Marcy Bowers, first of all, thanks for talking to us. My pleasure. So you're a world-renowned gynecologist and surgeon. You're also a transgender woman. Can you tell me a little bit about... Well, I mean, I, I identify as a woman, but... You're a woman, right. I'm a woman with... I mean, that's my life, day-to-day, mm. -day, but I have a transgender history. Hmm. But what is a woman? A woman is a... You know, it's a combination of your physical attributes and then what you're showing to the world and the gender clues that you give. And hopefully those match your gender identity. The critics on the other side of this. Hopefully. Pause. It says, hopefully those match your gender identity. This goes back to gender identity and actual gender. You understand? So she says she's got a transgender history. So she's not going to give the right answer. It's obvious. It's biased. Okay? Play on. Uh, of, this, of this issue. There aren't many. But go ahead. There aren't many who would disagree with what you're saying about? Well, you know, the dinosaurs of the world are certainly out there. Pause. Mm -hmm. yeah. When is it the dinosaur of the world is talking about traditionalists, people that are still cultural? That's why the, the, the professor said Matt Walsh is an essentialist. He says you are, an, you, are, you, are, you are an essentialist. You understand? Based on cultural norms. What is he saying? He says he's traditional. 
is biblical. That's what he's saying. Okay? Play on. I don't know if you've ever heard of people in the trans-abled community. These are people who are physically able-bodied but feel like they should be disabled or identify as such. Uh, for example, a man who has two arms but feels like he should have one. If a, if a man in this kind of marginalized community was went to the doctor and said, I want to have my arm cut off, do you think that... That doesn't have anything to do with gender identity. Pause. It's the same thing. It's the same thought process. The problem that, you know why? Because they are pushing this, what, sexual deviant behavior. Because people that are anorexic is the same mindset. You understand? People that say, no, I don't feel like, I feel like my arm don't belong to me. My leg don't belong to me. So I want to cut it off. They should also be classified like such and be popularized all over. But they are not. Because the whole point of this is to push sexual deviant behavior to our children, to our brothers and sisters. That's the whole point of this. Okay, go ahead. Well, it's uh, so someone's, someone's self-identity, how someone identifies. That's, um, so that's someone who has a, um, a, and I'll accept it as a mental diagnosis. Pause. Psychiatric. Pause. He says it's a mental diagnosis and it's, it's, it's what? Requires psychi psychiatric help, right? That's the same thing that these people that say, no, that's my gender identity versus actual gender. It's a psychological problem. Even the brothers, the, those brothers, they said, but if you, if you are a man, but you want to be a woman, something is wrong in you, something is wrong inside of you, something is wrong in your family. That's what they say. But a college professor, a gynecologist, they don't know what that means. You understand? But they do know what that means. They are being politically correct to protect their what? Their, their sexual fetish. Because it's a sexual fetish. It's a fetish. You understand? Okay, that's it on that. Play the next video. Welcome back to Piers Morgan Uncensored. It's a simple question that now terrifies politicians the world over. And it's this. What is a woman? Well, Conservative podcast host Matt Walsh, in a moment of defying intervention has made a documentary about it, and it's called simply, What is a Woman? And it's out now. What is a woman? Can you tell me that? <laughs> well, you're at the Women's March. You must have some idea. Please, if, if one person could tell me what a woman is. Pause. At the Women's March, this is a Women's March, which is, majority is all women. None of them can even identify that they are women. They can't tell. Go ahead. What is that? A woman is not anything in particular. There is not one particular thing. It could be many things to many people. Some women have penises, right? Some men have vaginas. I like scented candles. And I've watched Sex and the City. Yeah. How do I know if, if I'm a woman? That's a great like, question. You're not a scientist. You're not a gender studies major. No. How do you know that you're a man? I guess because I got a dick. Pause. <laughs> you know, I like this old man. So direct, so refreshing. He just speaks the truth. Yeah, you understand? He does not have a dog in this fight. He just tells it like it is. You understand? Okay. Ne next video. So, so, the guy standing is a black man, as you can see. You understand? It's not his color identity. So, the one approaching to this man is a homosexual. A man who's identifying as a woman. Okay? Watch this. So, what's your cause? What's your cause? Well, first, what's your position? I'm gay. I am too. What is this? Why does it say one man and one woman? I'm the happiest man in the world. Why does your sign say one man and one I'm woman? Because I'm 100% gay. Why does your sign say one man and one woman? Because this is the right natural way. What does that mean? I don't know. What, what is, Why are you I having... think word, words are being... Words don't mean Turn anything around. today. Turn around. Marriage always one man and one woman. So you're saying that gay people can't get married? Uh, I don't believe in uh, special rights. But you're black. And? How, how can Pause. So, 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 this is what we read in the book, in the article. Because remember, they said the civil rights movement, what was the next logical step? Feminism, right? Feminism, what was the next logical step? Transgenderism. So now they equate black people's rights with what? With gay rights. You understand? He says, but you're black. So meaning you should understand. Because what you're going through, 
what you, you, you and your forefathers went through, we also went through it in our own way. You see that? Ray, I mean, play on. In this well, country. Well, well, I'm not black. I'm a white lesbian. Pause. Okay. Yeah, really? I mean, a boy. So, so, he says he's not black. He's a white lesbian. <laughs> That's some heavy stuff what he's saying. So, he's really giving them the taste of their own medicine right here. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Really? I mean, a boy. Yeah, a boy could be a girl. Really? No, you're making a mockery. No, so you're making I, a mockery, no. sir. So why do do you believe then that what about before civil rights and that black people had well, to drink it, at different fountains? I know. Was that wrong? Yeah. It was legal. No, you got your civil rights, which is wonderful. No, wait, wait. It was I'm legal. Not, I'm not a racist in any shape I'm or form. I'm not a racist either. Well, you're a black bigot. No, no, no. I'm a white lesbian. Oh, so, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Address me as a white lesbian. Oh. Okay. I'm not black. A boy could be a girl, and a girl could be a boy, so if I want, I'm not black. So well. if you talk to me, you address me as a white lesbian. Okay, white lesbian. Okay, now we can talk. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I have never okay. seen a... One you see, he's giving them the taste of their own demonic medicine because it is demonic. You understand? Go ahead. Anyway, I have never seen a white lesbian that's obviously a black man that's bigot. Oh, i never seen a man that is gay based on science. I was born gay and no, I'm not oh, what, gay. What, what? So when the doctor said, congratulations, Mr. Johnson, you have a five pound, six ounce, what? Gay man? Gay male? No, because you're not born a behavior. I'm born who I am and no, you no, were born I'm, black. No, I, look, see? <laughs> see, I told you I'm a white lesbian and you won't acknowledge me as a white lesbian. Because but you you're want not. Me, so you're not gay. You're making a mockery. No, you're making a mockery. No. And this is it's this is it's this artificially intelligence. The same thing is laws that are based on hypocrisy and bigotry. Nazi Germany. You're the bigot. No, no, you are. No, sir. You're you for are. you you're special. You've changed the definition of marriage. Only your people can do that. Mm. Only your people. Only gay people can change the definition of marriage. Are they equal or special? Are you special? No, I'm equal. All human beings should be treated equally, not specially. Sir, so you're ridiculous. No, no, you don't have no That's sense. That's my opinion. No, you have a right to your own okay, opinion. Okay, will you enjoy so, your white lesbian day, you, black man? Thank you, and you enjoy okay. your gay lifestyle. And you hold your sign and, and make will, a fool and, of and we, and we will stop this nonsense. It will get overturned. You are the nonsense. It, well, it will get overturned because you guys believe in the law. So when we overturn it, you will accept it, right? How, how is a black man? How could you be how such a bigot? How can a white lesbian? No, you're, no, no, a, you're I, the no. first black so, bigot so I've met. You're the first, so you're telling me a boy could be a girl. Is that stupidity? You're stupid. Can a girl be a boy? Sir, you're the stupidest that, man oh, I've met, and I, I don't care well, what color you are. I will love you and tell you the truth. I am not I racist. Not you, you are the are. stupidest you, you, human you I have are. met. Okay. Okay? So I will I You're will a love human. You. I'm a human. And I will you tell will you the love truth. no one. I will love you and tell no. you the truth. I won't lie to you. You're a hate People spreader. that are afraid of you lie to you. No, you spread hate. There is no gay gene. What's the name of the gay gene? ABC? What's the name of the gay gene? What's the name of the stupid gene? It's called uh, Johnny. No, it's called whatever your no, name no, no, is. It's called Congratulations. White you hey, I you have it. shown me I, America yeah, is yeah, really yeah. fucked so, up. No, we're going to change things. So <laughs> no, take you have a good day. Yeah. Okay, that is on the whole place. So he gave them a taste of their own medicine. But I'm showing you that America is pushing garbage. And the, and the people, they are afraid to confront them. Because why? Because they don't want to be labeled, labeled as, no, you are transphobic and whatnot. No, 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 no. We believe what the Bible says. The Lord says, male and female made he them. We believe that. And we stand for that. And we're going to defend that. You understand? Okay, play the next video. Why can't I identify as a black lesbian? Pause. <laughs> you see that? This is the, just the opposite of what we just saw. You understand? Go back. Play it again. Watch this. Yeah, play Why it. can't I identify as a black lesbian? 
Pause. You see, the black woman could not even <laughs> contain herself. But this is madness. You understand? Go ahead. Well, firstly, I mean, it was... I'm serious. Her. I'm serious. If I can identify as anything mm -hmm. without any need to prove I'm actually what that is, I, I why can't I, I on International Women's Day say, I'm Piers Morgan, I'm a black lesbian? I think taking it to a kind of absurd no, no. status... I think, right, I think that's what... About quite a, a with respect, I think that you would already opened the absurdity door by saying it is limitless. You can do what you like. Anyone can say, I'm a woman. So I simply ask you, why can't I? I mean, this point kind of ridicules trans people to an extent. Actually, I think, I think what you said ridicules trans people. Why can't I identify as a black lesbian? <laughs> Well, I'm serious. I'm serious. If I can identify as anything mm -hmm. without any need to prove I'm actually what that is, I, I why can't I, on International Women's Day, say I'm Piers Morgan, I'm a black lesbian? I think taking it to a kind of absurd no, status. No, no. I think, where I think we're that's what. You, about quite a, a with respect, I think that you would already opened the absurdity door by saying it is limitless. You can do what you like. Anyone can say, I'm a woman. So I simply ask you, why can't I? I mean, this point kind of ridicules trans people to an extent. Actually, I think, I think what you said ridicules trans people. Okay, that's it on there. That's it on there. But I'm showing you the sickness that is moving upon this earth, pushed primarily by America. America pushes that sickness throughout the earth, and they want people to accept it. They shoving transgenderism down our throat. They want us to believe that. We're not going to agree with that thing. No, 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 no. Okay, now watch this. Next video. Let's get to some fun. Because in the future, all of the best women are going to be men. That's what Trans is all about. Why do we need women to do stuff when we can just have men that are dressed like women do stuff? They're going to be stronger. They're going to be faster. They're going to work harder. Because, well, they're definitely going to be stronger. They're men, of course. And Hershey's is trending on Twitter. It's not for a good reason. The hashtag boycott Hershey's is trending on Twitter. Because a chocolate manufacturer has decided to celebrate International Women's Day. So they are promoting Faye Johnstone, who was one of the five people featured in their campaign. And let's just take a look at their commercial. My name is Faye Johnstone. I'm the executive director of Wisdom to Action. We can create a world where everyone is able to live in public space as their honest and authentic selves. See the woman changing how we see the future. Remember, this is a man. This is a man on International Women's Day promoting transgenderism. Yes, sir. So much so, that he, even, he even went as far as to create a chocolate. You understand? Go back. Go back where the ad, where, where the ad starts to play. Yeah, pause. Play. At their commercial. My name is Faye Johnstone. I'm the executive director of Wisdom to Action. We can create a world where everyone is able to live in public space as their honest and authentic selves. See the woman changing how we see the future at Hershey's Canada. Oh. Plot twist, Faye is actually a man. So that's a man promoting transgenderism on International Women's Day. Yes, sir. So who hates women? Is not us, is not the Israelites, is not the black men. Mm. No, no, is these transgenders. They are the ones that actually hate women. Go ahead. Twist, Faye is actually a man. So why would we be celebrating a man on International Women's Day? I don't know, because we're all crazy. And Western civilization is crumbling before our eyes. I think that's probably the best way to say it. If, you're, if you want to know a little bit more about Faye Johnstone, because honestly, even if Faye Johnstone dressed as he is, which is as a man, he would still be a contemptible character. He is a big believer in and believing that parents have no rights over their children and that to further the LGBTQ agenda, we need to make sure that children are treated like individuals separate from their parents. Here is an actual tweet from Mr. Faye Johnstone. He wrote, parents do not have absolute rights over their children. Children have rights too. Another gentle reminder to the children's rights sector. We need you to speak up for trans kids now more than ever. You can't make this up. Trans kids, what is that? We need you to speak for trans kids now more than ever. Play on. 
yep, that makes sense. That's what they are all about. For some reason, there's this bizarre focus, men that dress like women who are perverts, obviously, because it is a perversion to want to dress like a woman. Yeah. Uh, but they're very focused on children. They, they really want to get into the classrooms. They really want to make sure that we criminalize being a parent. If, if you don't agree with the fact that we want to access your children, then there's something wrong with you and you're a bigot and you're backwards and we need to make sure the state has more control in the form of the Department of Education. This is what Faye Johnstone is a big supporter of. Here's another tweet from Faye Johnstone. It's going to make you feel really good, so get, get, get excited. He wrote, militant, organized queers. That's what I want to see. That's what Pause. North America needs. Militant, organized queers. You know what that happened? Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom. Read that in Genesis chapter 19, verse 11. Yep. Yeah. So what militant, organized queers is what we just read in Genesis 19 earlier on. But I want you to read that thing again. Genesis 19. Read that for me again. Genesis 19. Read verse 5 and 6. They have gone Genesis chapter 19 verse 5. Read. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. We may have sex with them. Go ahead. And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him. Read. And said, I pray you, brethren, mm. do not so wickedly. Don't do this evil demonic thing. Read. Behold now, I have two daughters which have not known men. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Go ahead. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. Read. And they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came into Sir John, and he will need be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them? And they pressed so upon the men. They pressed so upon Lot. Read. Even Lot. Mm. And came near to break the door. Pause. They came near to break the door. That's what we're reading there. Militant organized queers. You understand? Keep playing. Queers. That's what I want to see. That's what North America needs. Don't let Trump f with us. Fight back. That's exactly what America needs. I do, oh yeah, militant, organized queers. And that should concern you, and you should stop being fearful and discussing the trans agenda. I'm so sick of people that, for whatever reason, don't have the courage to call out this evil against our children, to call out this <laughs> If you believe that children need to be further separated from their parents, that you can seed them She's with LGBTQIRSTUV yeah. alphabet soup awareness, then you are a freak, okay? That's what you are, you're a freak. And I would not let Faye Johnstone anywhere near my children. I don't even want Faye Johnstone anywhere near my chocolate, which is why the Daily Wire is not gonna just boycott her. She's instead, it's going to create its own chocolate bars. Yes, huge announcement, Jeremy made an announcement over his Twitter that we are launching Jeremy's Chocolates with two varieties. You're going to love these varieties. Listen There's up, going listen, to be pause, a pause. key him bar. So they're going to launch their own chocolate variety. Rewind it back a little bit. Yeah, okay. So they're going to create their own. But watch this. Pay attention to the names of these chocolates. Go ahead. Daily Wire is not going to just boycott Hershey's. Instead, it's going to create its own chocolate bars. Yes, huge announcement. Jeremy made an announcement over his Twitter that we are launching Jeremy's Chocolates with two varieties. You're going to love these varieties. There's going to be a he him bar, which has nuts. And there's going to be a she her bar, which is appropriately nutless. So go back, you go can back, go back, go back, go back. Pay attention. What just did? <laughs> <laughs> Brothers, <laughs> listen, man. This kingdom is of this. This is the most wicked kingdom on earth. You understand? Play it again. Jeremy made an announcement over his Twitter that we are launching Jeremy's Chocolates with two varieties. You're going to love these varieties. There's going to be a he him bar, which has nuts. And there's going to be a she her bar, which is appropriately nutless. Pause. So you can order. Man, you cannot make this up. This is, pe listen. Mm. Play the next video. <clears throat> yep. Hold on. Now, here's another one. Dylan Mc what Dylan Melvaney what yeah Dylan Melvaney yeah Dylan Melvaney 
This man, this this boy right there, but that's a man. I think he's 20 plus years old. His fetish or fantasy is to be a little girl. Yeah. That's his fantasy, yeah. Play the video. All right, guys. All right, guys. Jumping in uh, to another video that I saw over the weekend of Dylan Mulvaney. I keep covering Dylan Mulvaney because it's so obvious that Dylan Mulvaney is a pervert. So when you see that, you think that's a man. You think that's a woman. Yes, sir. On the picture right there. Yes, sir. No, that's a man. <laughs> Dylan Mulvaney. That's a man. Play on. Come on. And we used to have a society where we would acknowledge that someone was perverted and we would do everything that we could to keep that perverted person away from people that are vulnerable, especially children. Yeah. And I can say that there is probably no one that I trust least around children than men that want to dress up like little Pops. girls. So, I agree with that. No, I 100% mm -hmm. agree with that. The hell is this? Imagine. Mm -hmm. Because remember, you know what? Look up Nembla. Look up Nembla. Look up Nembla. Because this thing that we're seeing here is actually, guess what? It complements Nembla. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. First, first. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Rip. Click it. Yep. Mm. Now, read that. The title. Reading from wikipedia.org. Go ahead. North American Men or Boy Love Association. No, North American Men Boy Love Association. North American Men Boy Love Association. That's Nambla. Nambla. Now keep reading. The North American Men Boy Love Association, Nambla, is a pedophilia. Is a pedophilia? Come on. And pederasty. Pederasty advocacy organization in the United States. You see that thing? It says is a pedophilia and pederasty advocacy. They advocate is an advocacy organization in the U.S. Right. Go ahead. It works to abolish age of consent laws. Pause. Their job is to get rid of age. It says what? They, they want to abolish age of consent laws. What that mean? Keep reading. Criminal, criminalizing adult sexual involvement with minors. You see what they are doing? So they want to abolish this thing. So that means that an old man can sleep with a 10 year old and say, but if you, if they say, no, but that's how I feel. That's how I feel in my heart. This is sick. How is it that people don't see that this is sick? It's sick. You understand? But guess what? This is an organization in the U.S. You understand? And it's registered and it's known. Go ahead. And campaigns for the release of men who have been jailed for sexual contacts with minors. You cannot make this up. They want them to be released from jail, to go back into the world, to do this demonic stuff. Read. Read that again. Come on. And campaigns for the release of men who have been jailed for sexual contact with minors. Mm. That did not involve what it considers coercion. You see the meaning one? It was consensual. Meaning young men, were, 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 they consented for this. This is crazy. And that's what Dylan Melvaney is doing. Dylan Melvaney is part of this. Because what Dylan Melvaney is doing is what this organization is doing. You understand? Yes, sir. Now go back to the video. America is the most wicked kingdom on the planet Earth. That's why it's called the mother of harlots and abominations of the Earth. Okay, play on. So here is a video of Dylan dressing up as Eloise in New York City. Eloise, you guys know, the girl who goes to New York City and lives in the Plaza Hotel. Take it away, Dylan. I am Eloise. I am six. I'm a city oh. child. I live at the... So this man, he believes that he's a six-year-old girl. Six years old. He, that's his fetish. That's his fantasy. To be a six-year-old girl. Six-year-old little girl dressed like this. You cannot make this up, brothers. This right here, this is the reason why we are not going to give the most high God rest until this evil is destroyed, until Babylon is wiped out from the face of the earth. Play it again. 
York City, Eloise, you guys know, the girl who goes to New York City and lives in the Plaza Hotel. Take it away, Dylan. I am Eloise. I am six. I'm a city child. I live at the Plaza Hotel. Reminder that Dylan is an almost 27-year-old grown man. Pause. This is a 27-year-old. A 27-year-old who has a fetish or fantasy of being a six-year-old little girl dressed like this. And America is okay with that. They are pushing that. The transgender agenda, that's what they are pushing. This is America's transgender agenda. You understand? I'm trying to show you how deep this evil goes, brothers. There's, get that in Ephesians 6 verse 10. Ephesians 6 verse 12. Ephesians 6. You understand? Ephesians 6 verse 12. You understand? Read that. The book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. Watch this. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle not with flesh and blood. Go ahead. But against principalities. But against principalities. Because the people that are pushing this, these are principalities, meaning what? Governments. Principalities means governments. Go ahead. Against powers. Against what? Against powers. Powers in the government. Go ahead. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. That's the government. The rulers of the darkness of this world is the United States of America. They are the rulers of the darkness of this world. That's what you are seeing here. This is an example of the darkness of this world. Read again. The book of Ephesians, chapter, nine, chapter 6, verse 12. Go ahead. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Read. But against principality. Mm. Against powers. Against what? Against powers. Against powers, come on. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. That's the government. Particularly here, the American government, Babylon the Great. Read. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's the spiritual wickedness in high places. This is what America pushes. This is America's agenda. What you are seeing on the screen, that's America's agenda. That's America's transgender agenda that they are pushing on the people. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Okay, play the video. And he dresses up in little girl clothing. He talks openly about the fact that he wants to be a little girl. He doesn't say, this is my first day of being a woman, right? This is, this is something even more disgusting. This is my first day of being a girl. He outwardly fetishizes about being a little girl. He wants to be a little girl, a grown man. In a, right, in a righteous society, we would all condemn this. We would say this is unacceptable. We would say that this perversion is not something that we are going to accept. But we don't live in a righteous society. And I'm tired of saying, by the way, that the world has gone insane. It is specifically Western civilization, okay? It is specifically America that allows this because I don't even think in parts of South She's right. America is the kingdom that allows this garbage, this crap. They are pushing this nonsense on our children. They are pushing it in the school system now. They are pushing it through the media. And they are saying children must have a right. A right to do what? A right to accept, to feed off of this. Because this is what they are pushing to our children. So when you take your children to school, your child will come back from school telling you about, no, today the, the, the teacher was wearing a G-string with boobs hanging. What was going on? The teacher is a man wearing a G-string. Yeah, because there's a video that was floating around in the U.S. about that. You understand? Play on. I even think in parts of South America this would be allowed. I don't think, I don't think they would allow this behavior. In parts of South America, they would say, it is not normal for a grown man to want to wear little girl panties. Yes. Yeah. It'd be that simple. Something we should all be able to say. Rather, I have to be careful, because Western civilization has gone so down the drain, I have to be careful in how I say that, or else I will risk being called a transphobe. Exactly. Unbelievable. A transphobe. You cannot make Why would I have up? hate Paul. for this individual? Yeah, that's it on that. That's it on that. But the point here I'm trying to show you is that this is this the world is definitely on Nyaube. The whole planet is on crack. The whole planet is on Nyaube. They are high. You understand? Play the next video. Is there a next video? Okay. So now, watch this. Mm, yeah, there is a next video, right? The new ones. Okay, all places. Now, mm, we went over what's a woman and all that. I'm going to show you the agenda. What's the agenda behind this? Now, play the next video now. The new video. 
Okay, so remember the timestamps, right? I sent the timestamps, okay? I went from 52 seconds to 1 minute 34 seconds, okay? Now, this woman's name is, she's an investigative journalist. Her name is Jennifer Bilek, okay? So, she's being interviewed about this, this transgender agenda. Listen to what she says here, okay? Play. Let's hear what she has to say. I'm an investigative journalist, and I write at the um, intersection of uh, the gender industry, technology, and um, runaway corporatism. I got into writing about this industry uh, because I've, uh, I was in activist circles. Uh, I've campaigned for women's rights since I'm in my 20s. I've campaigned for the environment, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there came a point around uh, 2013 or so that um, suddenly uh, people were being deplatformed for acknowledging biological reality, that, there are, that we are a sexually dimorphic species. There are only male and female sexes mm. that are a sexually dimorphic species, just male and female, and there isn't anything in between. Transsexualism. <clears throat> so this woman, what she's saying is that we are sexually dimorphic species, meaning what? There's only male and female. That's what she's saying, which is biblical. You understand? Okay, give me that in Genesis 1, verse 27. Genesis 1, 27. Okay, I'm still going to deal with what is a man, what is a woman. I'm not done. Okay, read that. Chapter of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 27. Go ahead. So God created man in his own image. God created man in his own image. That means God has an image. And guess what? God is a black man. Read. In the image of God created he him. Uh -huh. Male and female created he them. You see that? Male and female created he them. Go ahead. And is that it on there? Yes, sir. Male and female created he them. Is that it? There is no in between. There is no gender identity. There is no sexual fluidity. Fluidity. I'm sexual fluid. Gender is a sexual is a sexual con construct. That's garbage. Okay. Now, now you're gonna play from one thirty-five to two minutes twenty-six seconds. Okay. Play. Transsexualism. <clears throat> has been around probably in the United States since the 1950s. Some people Pause. remember Christine. So I need you to pay attention to the key words in what she says. Go back a little bit to 135. She's going to explain. So just listen to the key words. I'll, I'll, highlight, the, I'll, I'll highlight them for you so you understand. Play. Transsexualism <clears throat> has been around probably in the United States since the 1950s. Some people remember Christine Jorgensen. Keep track of the time. Made a big splash in the papers. But, you know, it wasn't really part of our vernacular, our, you know, social vernacular at all. You know, uh, there was a few men who had this fetish, this adult uh, male fetish of um, appropriating female uh, synthetic uh, simulacrums of female biology for their, you know, sexual gratification. It used to be cross-dressing, uh, transvestites, um, and then as soon as the medical industrial complex um, advanced to the point where they could make reasonably, um, you know, good, uh, fake <laughs> uh, sexes, you know, um, then, you know, they started to appropriate female anatomy. Well, in the 1940s, so, so, this guy, so you this hear guy what she William said? Sims Bainbridge. Because I know some of you might have missed what she said. The things that she's mentioning in there is what? Transsexualism? That this thing of, no, I'm not a man, I'm a woman, it's a fetish. You understand? It's a fetish. That means it's a lust. That's what she's saying. So transsexualism, fetish, sexual gratification, you understand? Cross-dressing, uh, transvestite, appropriating female anatomy. That's what men are doing. So this whole thing is what? It's a fetish. You understand? It's a sexual lust. What is it? Bible calls it evil concupiscence. You understand? Evil concupiscence. Evil sexual desires. That's what this is. You understand? Okay. Play on now. From 27 to 3 minutes 47 seconds. Now, now, pause, pause. So, all the videos that you just watched, she's explaining the agenda. 
So don't miss what she's saying. She's explaining the agenda behind this. You understand? We dealt with evil concupiscence. The first, the, the first part was what? Gender boundaryless. The second part is last, evil concupiscence. That's what she went over, okay? From 2 minutes, 27 seconds to 3 minutes, 47 seconds. Okay, play. In the 1940s, this guy, this guy William Sims Bainbridge was uh, born. He graduated Harvard Pause. as a sociology. Um. William Sims Bainbridge is what? What you're seeing today is based upon their works. William Sims Bainbridge was an Edomite. You understand? Very accomplished and all that in science and technology and whatnot. So he has written many books about this stuff. So what you are seeing in the media, what they are pushing on social media, transsexualism and all that, is based on the books he written. Okay? Go ahead. Sociology um, professor. He's written many, many, many books um, about uh, cults, religions, technology, gaming, uh, the future of uh, psychological mind control. Mm -hmm. um, and he now works at the head of the National Science Foundation Cyber Human uh, Program, which is the melding. Uh, it basically overlooks the ethics involved in uh, human cyber uh, melding. And you know, you can see this, this trajectory you in the, the time? you know, along late 1990s, early 2000s. Um, there was a big shift in the culture from, you know, uh, data uh, from uh, the digital age and the information age. Um, and it sort of uh, moved into um, artificial intelligence, transhumanism, uh, robots, nanotechnology, biotechnology, Etc. So this is kind of where we're going now. This is like the future trajectory of this. But you know, Silicon Valley has been pushing a transhumanist agenda for, you know, since the early 2000s, late 1990s. So you see what they are doing. So all these tech technological advancements, you know, Silicon Valley and all of that, data world, data, data science and whatnot. It's all guess what? The biggest data that they want to get access to is what is transgenderism that's the biggest data that they are actually banking upon all these data signs are not, no 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 the most important data they are interested in is the data that is accumulated when people are transforming from men to women that's the data that they are actually care about so with the things that she mentioned is what psychological mind control that's why on that that, that website when they talk about um, gender clinic, what were they talking about? They were talking about, um, they said they're going to provide mental health services to you. Psychological mind control because psychologically it affects you. You understand? And this man is the head of nation, the National Science Foundation. It's actually it's quite a big organization. You understand? Not only that, but they, they say they overlook ethics and they focus on artificial intelligence. So all of these buzzwords that you hear, they, it's all about what? Idolatry. It goes back to that. It's all idolatry. Understand that? Okay. So let me see. Let me see. Yeah. Go to three minutes and 50 seconds. We're going to play from three minutes to from three minutes, 50 seconds to five minutes and 13 seconds. Pay attention. So then Bainbridge uh, meets up with um, another interesting character, uh, Martin Rothblatt. Pause. Who is... Um, Martin? Remember, I showed you the names of the people. I went to the Wikipedia pages first before this woman, before this video. So Christian Jorgensen, we, she mentioned him. Eh? She mentioned him. And then William Sims Bainbridge. Now she's mentioning who? Martin Rodblatt, Rodenblatt, what, whatever his name is. Okay, play on. Who is um, also a transhumanist. And Rothblatt is, um, he's a transsexual. He's a man that's appropriated uh, simulacrums of women's biology <clears throat> for himself. And he calls himself, you know, a transgender or a transsexual. And he's traveled around um, broadly in the culture in many different circles because he's accomplished so many different things. 
He's very well renowned and very well, you know, appreciated for his accomplishments. So he's been in the tech sector. He's been in the um, in the medical sector. He's been in all over Hollywood. You know, he's been on Oprah and he's been on a million different shows. You know, with his robot wife, which he created. Rothblatt wrote a book, and it's really like it's really a blueprint of what's going on in the culture now. This is his ideology, um, working off of the work of Bainbridge. Um, Whereas we're going to disintegrate the sexes, the boundary between the sexes. Mm. Um, there'll be no youth and age. There'll be no, you know, male and female. There'll be no uh, transhumanism is like boundarylessness. You know, you're out there in cyberspace. Ultimately, while you're getting there, it's an upgrade in humanity, building yourself with machines. You know, uh, transferring reproduction, human reproduction to the tech sector. In uh, I think it was late 1980, he got together oh, yeah. with a whole bunch of other transvestite lawyers and um, okay, we and transsexuals, and they created seconds. a document, which was the first. The okay, so the stuff that she mentioned is a lot of stuff that she said here, a lot of stuff. Go back, go back. I need you men to pay attention, man. Okay, so three minutes, fifty seconds to five minutes, thirteen seconds. That's the timestamp. Okay, go back. Three minutes. 50 seconds, go back there again. So then Bainbridge uh, meets up with um, another interesting character, uh, Martin Rothblatt, who is um, also a transhumanist. And Rothblatt is, um, he's a transsexual, he's a man that's appropriated uh, simulacrums of women's biology <clears throat> for himself, and he calls himself, you know, a transgender or a transsexual. And he's traveled around um, broadly in the culture in many different circles because he's accomplished so many different things. He's very well renowned and very well, you know, appreciated for his accomplishments. So he's been in the tech sector, he's been in the, um, in the medical sector, he's been in all over Hollywood, you know, he's been on Oprah and he's been on a million different shows, you know, with his robot wife, which he created. Rothblatt wrote a book and it's really like it's really so, a blueprint so of what's going on in the culture on. now. This is his. So this this man wrote blood. What did he do? He wrote a book. The book that we wrote is what we were reading. The book we were reading, that's what he wrote. So that's what she's referencing right here. You understand? Okay, come on. Going on in the culture now. This is his ideology, um, working off of the work of Bainbridge. Um, Whereas we're going to disintegrate the sexes, the boundary between the sexes. Um, there'll be no youth and age. There'll be no, you know, male and female. There'll be no, uh, transhumanism is like boundarylessness. You know, you're out there in cyberspace. Ultimately, while you're getting there, it's an upgrade in humanity, melding yourself with machines, you know, uh, transferring reproduction, human reproduction to the tech sector. In, uh, I think it was late 1980, so, so he got together with a whole bunch of other transvestites. There's a couple of things that she said. It says what? Disintegration of the sexes, okay? Boundarylessness, okay? In the sexes, okay? No male, no female, no youth, no age, no female. You understand? Uh, what is the other thing? Mm, yeah, basically that's what she's saying. She's saying that's the agenda. Because guess what? Once those things are destroyed, what do you have left? Cyberspace. That's all that's left. Because in cyberspace, you don't know whether that person is gay. You don't know if it's a man. You don't know if it's a female. Guess what? Just go with what you feel. Don't worry about what they look like. That's why, why? Listen, you know this thing of talking to somebody online, but you don't even know what they look like? That's what that is. You only see a picture. You don't know if this is a man behind the, the, on the other side. How you know? You don't know. But it is 16, ne? You don't even know that's a man or a woman on the other side. You only see a picture. So th this agenda has already been already online. They've been pushing it already. Okay. Um, play from 5 minutes 50 seconds. Yeah. Play from here. We're going to play to... We're going to play up to seven minutes, two seconds. Read, play. Yes, sir. Sell that to the public, you know, transhumanism and disembodiment as a life. 
um, you're going to have to groom them and get them there. And the way to do that is to um, create this ideology that says that you can choose your sex. That's disembodiment. You can't choose your sex. You are the body that you were born as, no matter what happens to you. I mean, in 200 years, if they dig up my bones, you know, they're going to find a female. You know, you can't change that. So the ideology is promoting the idea that you can, right? So, and they're driving this ideology into children's schools, not only their schools, they're driving it into their entertainment, um, their social media platforms, mm -hmm. their schools, um, all the organizations that, you know, that cater to children are all jumping on board with, with this ideology. And this has only happened in the past 10 years. I mean, before this, we didn't hear about this word. We didn't hear transgenderism. We didn't even hear transsexual. 2014, Laverne Cox was on the cover of Time magazine, uh, owned by Mark Benioff. And, um, okay, that's it on that. But what I'm showing you, brothers, is this. This is America's transgender agenda. To push all this garbage to our children in the schools. And guess what? Different countries are adopting all that. But some countries here on the continent, they are rejecting it. And they are going to be vilified for that. Understand that? It's so bad that today, people don't even know what a woman is. Neither do they know what a man is. They don't know. Everybody's done confused. You understand? So now watch this. Okay, so I still had a lot to cover. So I guess I will continue. Not today, though. Okay. So, brothers and sisters, we appreciate you. All praise to the Lord. Okay. I still have a lot to cover. Lord will, I'll continue this class through another topic. You understand? I continued last week's class through this topic. I'll continue this class in another topic. All praise to the Most High God for that thing. Okay. So, Revelation 11 verse 8. Come on. The book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 8. Go ahead. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. Read. Which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Which spiritually is called what? Which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Go ahead. Where also our Lord was crucified. Where also our Lord was crucified. What we need to understand is this, brothers and sisters. Brothers, we are at war. I hope you can see what's, go what's going on in the world. Ne? I hope you can see what the hell going on. The fight we're up against. This is not something small. This is big. We are at war. We are under attack spiritually. Using social media. You understand? In the schools. Using technology that you carry around every single day. You understand? Yes, we are at war. So all these technological advancements is not for our benefit. It's to confuse Many of our people, because our people, they are holding on to them. Our people don't want to let go of them. Our people, when we teach them the laws of God, they don't want to depart from these things. Because what? Those are their idols. You understand? It's going to take a lot to rip them out and separate them from the idols they worship through social media and smartphones and tablets. That's the world we're living in. You understand? Transhuman, transgender cyber melding the hell is that but that's the world we're living in so all praises to the lord listen give me that in isaiah 45 is it isaiah no isaiah 1 give me isaiah 1 and 9 i'm going to show you something because i remember this was a couple of years back when i read this scripture many people didn't believe it okay but watch this the book of isaiah chapter 1 verse 9 watch this except the lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. We are that very small remnant. We are that small remnant that is making reference to. Go ahead. We should have been as sword. We should have been as what? We should have been as sword. Come on. And we should have been like unto Gomorrah. That's it. If the Lord had not left the prophets in these last days, guess what? We would be a part of them. That's what he's saying. He says, if he had not left unto us the prophets, we would have been like this right here. All the stuff that we're teaching against, yes, the evil that we see, we would have been a part of that evil, one way or another. 
Whether you, call, you, you do it willingly, whether you do it directly or indirectly, you will be going to be involved in all that garbage. I'm telling you. You understand? Yes, sir. Because the quickest way to do it is how? Black men like to watch porn, which is garbage, is evil as hell. But guess what? They have no problem watching lesbians. So if your girlfriend was to suggest another woman coming in for a manager tour, you would do it. Yes, guess what? You would be part of this. That's the quickest way, by the way. You understand? The quickest way to partake in that, that would be that. Because black men have no problem watching women and women having sex. You understand? Yes, sir. So they have no problem having manager tours. Guess what? They are part of the LGBT. Mm. It's that simple. Yeah. Read again verse 9. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 9. Read. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. Read. We should have been a Sodom. We should have been a Sodom. And we should have been like unto Gomorrah. That's it. You understand? Let's break bread. Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Okay? Because actually, you know what? First Corinthians 11, right? But I don't want to read verse 23. Start at verse 20. Yep. Start at verse 20. Read that. Be, I want you to pay attention to what we're about to read. Start at verse 20. First book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 20. Go ahead. When ye come together. When we what? When ye come together. When we come together, like we come together on the Sabbath day and all that. Read. Therefore, into one place. This is not to eat the Lord's Supper. Stop. When we come together, it's not for you to come and eat. And yet, meaning what? Don't, the Apostle Paul is saying, don't come to the Sabbath looking for, only coming because you're looking forward to the food. So you have to examine yourself why you're here. Don't be coming together on the Sabbath when we come together. The only thing that you're looking forward to is the food that they, the, food that the sisters are going to make. The bread that's going to be baked. Don't be looking forward to that. That's not the reason why you're here. Don't be coming because you're looking forward. You're going to be drinking that juice. No. Read. For in eating, everyone taketh before. He says, he says, for in eating, what? Everyone taketh before. Everyone. Read that right. Come on. For in eating, everyone taketh before. What verse you in? Verse 21 says. Okay. Read verse 21 again. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 21. For in eating everyone taketh before other his own supper. You see what he's saying? He says because in eating everyone taketh before other his own supper. Meaning what? When you eat, you're eating as if you're eating your own supper in the house. Meaning you're looking forward to that because it's like you're eating your own supper. If you want to eat your own supper, eat your own supper at the house before you arrive. So it's not about you looking forward to the food that you're going to find when you get here. You see the point? Yes, sir. Read. And one is hungry and another is drunken. You see that? It says one is hungry and another one is drunken. Go ahead. What? Have ye not houses to eat and to drink in? You, you see what it's saying? Don't you have houses to eat and drink in? Because people are coming here looking forward to taste the wine. They come here looking forward to taste the bread. He says, don't you have a house where you can eat and drink in your house? Don't be coming here because you're looking for that. Read. Or despise ye the church of God. Because you, he says, by doing so, you hate the church of God. Because you don't know why you're here. Read. And shame them that have not. And shame them that have not food. Read. What shall I say to you? What shall I say unto you because of this behavior? Read. Shall I praise you in this? Shall I praise you in this? No. Read. I praise you not. I praise you not. Go ahead. For I have received of he the says, Lord. He says, because I have received of the Lord. Read. That which also I deliver unto you. He says, what I have received from the Lord, I'm delivering it to you. So you understand, or this is not about coming together for the food and drink. You can do that in your own house. You understand? Read. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed. Because betrayed. Christ... The same night he was betrayed. Go ahead. He did what? To break. He took break. Come on. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, 
Take it. This is my body. He says, listen, this is my body. This bread represents my body. Read. Which is broken for you. Mm. This do in remembrance of me. He says, do this to remember me. So he's saying, don't come here because you're looking for food. He's not saying you can't eat when you get here. That's not what he's saying. But he's saying, don't be looking forward for, to that. Which is part of the reason why you're coming in the first place. Okay? It says, the eating of bread, the breaking of bread, you understand, represents the body of Christ. What Christ did for the 12 tribes of Israel. Read. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had stopped saying, the cup represents his blood. Read. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Mm. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. So when we break bread, brothers, is to remember what Christ did. He's, the bread represents his body. The blood represents his... The, the, the wine represents his blood. Read. For as often as you eat this bread... Because as often as you eat this bread, when we come together... Read. And drink this cup. And drink this cup, which repre represents his blood, which is spilled for us. Read. Ye do show the Lord's death till he come. You are showing the Lord's death till he come. You're remembering why he died and how he died. And who did he die for? Read. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread. Whosoever shall eat this bread. And drink this cup of the Lord unworthily. And what? Unworthily. And what? Unworthily. And what? Unworthily. unworthily. When he says unworthily, not everybody that walk in can break bread. That's what he's saying. Because you're doing it unworthily, you don't know what you're getting yourself into. You understand that? He says, you don't know what you're getting yourself into. You must know exactly what you're getting yourself into. Because there's going to be a price to pay. If you do it unworthily. Read. Shall be guilty. Shall be what? Shall be guilty. Shall be what? Shall be guilty. You are going to be guilty of what? Of the body and blood of the Lord. You are going to be guilty of what Christ died for. You're going to be guilty for that. It's going to be as if you're crucifying the Lord again once more. Read. But let a man examine himself. But he says examine yourself. Meaning sit down and examine yourself. You understand? The stuff that you're still dealing with, if the stuff that you don't want to let go of, you cannot break bread. You cannot. Read. So, and so, let him eat of that bread. So, let him eat of that bread. After you examine yourself, he says, then you can eat the bread. Because you, you examine, then you repent. Then he says, then you can eat the bread. Go ahead. And drink of that cup. Then you drink of that cup. Go ahead. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily. You eat and drink unworthily. Read. Eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. You are bringing death and damnation to yourself. Because you're going to be judged for that. The death and damnation is what? Fire and brimstone. Read. Not descending the Lord's body. You are not descending the Lord's body. Why he died in the first place. Because the wine tastes good. The unleavened bread tastes good. That's what you look forward to. But you're not descending the Lord's body. Why did he die? Why are you doing this for? Read. For this cause, many are weak. Many are weak. And meaning what? Many are weak in, man, in their spirit. Their spirit is weak. Read. And sickly. And you. sickly. Weak and sickly in your body and in your spirit. Read. Among you mm -hmm. and many sleep. And you're going to die. Many sleep meaning many die. You get weak. You get sick and you drop dead. Because you're not descending the lost body. So that's why we have classes called spiritual fitness. Why? Because if you weaken the spirit, you're going to get sick and you're going to die. Because you did not descend the lost body. That's what he's saying. Yes, we break bread, but you must understand why you're doing it. That's why I'm going over it. So you know exactly why we're doing this. You have to understand that. So new brothers coming in, they cannot break bread. New sisters coming in, they cannot break bread. They cannot take the wine or the bread. When we break bread at that point, they can't do it. 
and it will be to save their life. Until they're ready. Until they say, I'm making a decision, I don't want to do this no more. And I'm moving forward. Yeah, down okay. Then you know what you're getting yourself into. Okay, let's give the Lord a hand. Oh, please.